Okay. So I think that flag tells you the story. We've got a little crosswind gusting across, and it may be with the kickers moving left to right. Otherwise, pretty pleasant evening down here for this game between Kansas State and Oklahoma State, as you see the veteran Bill Snyder back for his second term and 20th season overall. And across the way, the man who has really restored the fortunes of the Cowboys, Mike Gundy who just keeps getting better and better. This is his seventh season as a Cowboys head coach. So, uh, now Lisa Salters, you tell me there was a bigger weather story last night. I slept right through it. <laughs> hey, Brent, as if you guys were still out in Southern California, magnitude 4.7 earthquake hit here this morning at 2.12 a.m. in Craig, Oklahoma. That's about 60 miles south of us where we are here in Stillwater. I felt it. It woke me up, but I went right back to sleep. None of the players, coaches, officials, none of them felt it at all. In fact, Mike Gundy told me he didn't even know about it until I told him. He said, I don't watch TV, don't listen to the radio. People don't talk to me on game day. So the That's freshman Josh Stewart brings it out to the I 32. Was in Tuscaloosa. You, did, you didn't feel it? I was gonna. Ah. Did you hear it? Did you feel anything? Did you? I thought it might have been last call. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Hurry. Here we go. We've got uh, Brandon Whedon completing better than 71% of his passes, 22 touchdowns and seven picks. Wow, but a big, strong arm. Great understanding of this offense. Dana Holgerson last year brought it from Houston. He's now the head coach at West Virginia. Todd Monken is now running this show, and Brandon Whedon's doing a great job. And Herschel Sims, the talented freshman, checks on as they throw the first pass to Joseph Randall. But let's go back to number 23, who appeared here in the starting lineup. He's only 5'9", 208. He was in the doghouse for a while, and uh, he has been getting a chance more and more. There is that full house look that the Cowboys like here on second and five. And they bring the end around, and that's Blackman with his first touch of the game, and he will not get a first down. Now, very important, Brent, early in this game for Kansas State's defense to get off to a good start. And, you, know, you love to see Oklahoma State just trying to get the ball into their playmakers' hands. The first play was Randall on the catch out to the right flat. And then, of course, Blackman on the reverse, just try to get them settled into the game early. Use the running game with Randall short of that first down. Now, this is an important point in this game, Harvey, because Kansas State won the flip and deferred. They knew that Oklahoma State was going to get the ball first. You and I are a little bit yeah, surprised, yeah, but it's, it's three it, and, and out. And it works out for them. And, and the other thing, Brent, let's remember how the second half ended last week against Oklahoma. Very important for them to get their confidence established here early in this game. That was a big series for them. There is the freshman Tyler Lockett from just down the road in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Waiting to touch the ball for the first time. Takes a big hop toward the end zone. Knocked dead at the one-yard line. What a great special teams play by the Cowboys when you can bury a team. And that was Kyle Hale, a safety. Watch this play by Hale. Brent, you work on this over and over, but how many times do you see it in college football, guys? Take the ball across the goal line. Great effort by Hale to knock it back and give this defense now a chance to pin Kansas State deep in their own territory. Quinn Sharp, one of the best punters in the country a yep. year ago. Now he's also the place kicker. And he kicks off and he buries Kansas State inside the five. But give Hale a big good going for that. Hubert is the running back now behind Klein. He'll get the first carry behind the right side. And he is jumped by Bill Young's defense and for people that have not seen Colin Klein play this year he has been a great story all over college football 6'5 226 pound junior he's tough very physical he's thrown for close to a thousand yards but Brent he's thrown for or he's run for close to 800 yards and tonight his ability to control the clock and run the football along with John Hubert will be the key for Kansas State so you can see Oklahoma State's base 4-3 bring a safety up close to the box and there's that read option Klein fumbles the ball and they go fumble first and goal and there is another takeover 
That is their 13th fumble recovery. That is their 30th overall turnover. They are number one in the FBS. Great job. They work on this over and over, Brent. And this is a nice job, it looked like, by Rashetti Jones getting his hand in there to knock the ball loose. Here comes Klein. You know it's coming. There's Jones collapsing down to get a hand on the ball, and it's loose. Go back to Hale's effort, Brent, to keep the ball from going into the end zone, pinning Kansas State deep in their own territory, and the defense gets the big turnover. Now Randall will be the running back. Kai Staley, number nine, is the fullback. He is off to the left in this full house set. This is power to the left, and here comes Randall in that direction. End zone, touchdown. Joseph Randall with the first score of the game. And the Cowboys jump ahead as, again, they take advantage of the 30th turnover of the year that their defense has come up with. It's just an amazing statistic. Yeah, 30 turnovers, Brent, and they have turned those turnovers now into 129 points, which is by far the best in the country. So the defense does their job, and when the offense gets the ball, more often than not, they're putting points up on the board. Quinn Sharp, as we told you, does everything. Tax on the extra point. So it was first the turnover. Forced by Bill Young's aggressive defense. Then one play after that, Joseph Randall falls power to the left. Basically a wishbone look, and he steps into the end zone. Well, the number three team in the nation, Oklahoma State leading here in Stillwater as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the BCS championship of the night of January 9th in New Orleans, Louisiana. There's the running back. We told you he keeps the defenses on as they look for Blackman. And the ball bounces off the tee here for Quinn Sharp. It is amazing, Herbie, to watch Sharp practice. He takes Sunday, Monday off. Then he'll practice maybe punting on Tuesday and maybe kicking off on Wednesday for a little bit and then field goal kicking. They were concerned when the season started as to whether or not he could handle all three. He wanted to take a shot at it. And he's one of the prolific all-around kickers in the country. Banging this one into the end zone and Lockett decides to bring it on out. And he is run out of bounds. There's a penalty flag at the 15-yard line as Lockett is run out around the 20-yard line. So we've got a penalty here with 12.44 to go in our first quarter. There's no foul on the play. It'll be first and 10. Herbie, let's take a look at uh, today's impact players brought to you by Chick. Well, clearly on offense, it's Colin Klein. He's already got the fumble. He's going to have to turn his game around after that. John Hubert, the two of them represent the bulk of the offense. And on defense, Meshach Williams will provide pressure off the edge. And then Arthur Brown, the transfer from Tennessee, doing a good job, or from Miami, rather, doing a great job in providing a lot of leadership on that side as well. So Klein will put up his first pass incomplete. Slipped out of bounds on that far side. It'll be second and ten. Curry Sexton, freshman. See, Colin is going to have to throw the football. And I, and I like to call here on first and ten because Bill Young, the defensive coordinator from Oklahoma State, make no mistake, he is going to put as many people up close to the line of scrimmage as possible to stop that running game until Colin Klein in this passing game shows that they can consistently throw the football. Second and 10, the read option handoff, and this is going to be third and long. Middle of that defense, and that was low, the safety stepping up. He also plays out of that linebacking spot as Bill Young moves him around. Yeah. He is very, very productive. Well, and the defensive line right now doing a great job of getting off their blocks and being in position to help out. But, Brent, these safeties, Lowe and Martin both, are going to be down close, and that's something that Bill Young has reiterated all week to his defense. Third down and nine coming up for Klein. They empty and they give him five receivers. He identifies the one safety. 
Cowboys rush four and they flush Klein for the pocket. He's an excellent runner trying to get the first down and he does. Now you can see the Cowboys going for the strip at the end and that was Jones coming from behind. This is what Young and the Cowboys teach. And Brent, this is what they're going to have to defend tonight. This might be the best play for Kansas State. Third down, everybody's covered. Let number seven take off. They go for the strip, but they better try to stop him short of the first down marker. Good awareness there by Colin Klein on third down and long. First and ten. Wildcats down a touchdown following an early turnover. If you just turned over to take a peek at the number three team in the country. And it was a nice completion for a first down. Sitting down was Thompson. A little bit of soft coverage that time, and so it will be another it, it, first and ten. Brent, in this day and age, especially in this conference, you, you look at Kansas State, and it's you're not you're not looking at Baylor, you're not looking at Texas Tech or Oklahoma State or Oklahoma or where these offenses it's going to throw it in up tempo. A little bit more old school with Bill Snyder. They're going to work the clock, and a little pass like that is a big deal for this offense. Now, Angelo Peace is the Wildcat back here tonight so let's keep an eye on peace on the field and he's got it on the Wildcat they're going to cut back in the middle and he picks up a couple of yards before Elkins brings him to the ground so Bill Snyder he'll have some twists and turns with this offense here tonight try to do some unusual things try to keep the Cowboys off balance try to keep the clock in his favor if he can because the Cowboys are so prolific and field position will be a big part of this game too for Kansas State. It's been big that they've been able to put the put together a pretty good drive here. And again, you said it early. They want to chew as much clock up as they can. Hubert back in as the running back. Klein hands off to him and number 33. This is going to be third and fairly long on this play as Lewis comes up to make the spot the stop and Sean Lewis is one of the better athletes here he's out of Missouri City Texas he's a sophomore only 5 11 he was a consensus freshman All-American a year ago you can see that Lewis and the other linebackers are just attacking downhill because again the very little respect that they have for this passing game which is dead last in the Big 12 conference third and six just shy of midfield Klein. Again, forced out of the pocket. Fires deflected in the air and out of bounds incomplete. And the Wildcats are forced to punt. Thompson, the intended target. And Cooper Bassett, a defensive end that time, lined up as a defensive end and then actually dropped and mirrored Colin Klein trying to stay up with him and try to force the pass there. And look who's back to return the punt. The all everything. Justin Blackman with those sure mitts of his. His first punt return of the season. As of course, the Cowboys are taking a look at a couple of wrinkles. They know that they've got some tough games remaining, including Bedlam against OU. A beautiful punt. And this will be a fair catch at the 15 yard line. And wouldn't you know it? Just a little bit of a juggle there by number 81. And then he hangs on. 7 0 now. We'll be right back. The number three team in the nation with the lead. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. And in part by Prudential. Prudential, bring your challenges. Hey, we welcome you back to Stillwater with Kirk Herb Street and Lisa Salters. I'm Brett Musburger. Nice to have you along with us here tonight as we take a peek at the number three team, Oklahoma State, pursuing LSU and Alabama at the top of the rankings. And of course, after a turnover, if you're just checking to see what the score is, Cowboys pounced. One play, they recovered a fumble. The 30th turnover of the year for the Cowboy defense. Just amazing. Number, number one in the nation. And here comes Brandon Whedon now with first and ten. 
And off to Randall again. He's been the workhorse. He stopped near the 20. Herbie, let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players here. Well, we, we uh, again have to start with Brandon Whedon, his leadership, not just his ability to throw, will be big tonight again for the Cowboys. I love Joseph Randall and Jeremy Smith. We put Randall up there because he's the go-to man for the most part. Justin Blackman on the outside, and Blacknick, if uh, Kansas State drops back to throw, Blacknick will put a lot of pressure on him. Already seven sacks this year. Second down, wide open, and that time, they go to Tracy Moore. You know, there's so much attention, Herbie, to number 81. Guys like Moore and Anderson, they can shake it and bake it loose. You saw the linebacker, Lemur, actually bite up on the play action, and that's the difference in this offense. You have to respect the running game, and it got the linebacker out of position. Play action. Whedon has great time. Fires downfield. Got another open target. It's Moore again, and Moore is into the red zone. You talk about a prolific hold. The ball was put down. Kansas State has the football running out of bounds. Yeah, it, uh, Brent, I don't think... It looks like it came out. The I, officials did not stop it, Herbie. Brent, as he was coming down, it looked like the ball might have jarred loose. And I'm sure you're going to have to take another look at this to see if his knee was down. But there was some confusion down there on the field with the officials. I guess somebody did mark it down. They're headed back to the point of where Tracy Moore was going down. Now, let's, uh, let's see what they decide here. Remember, instant replay upstairs is taking a look at the play. Every play in the college game is reviewed automatically upstairs. Yeah, right towards the just the very end. I mean, he's fighting for every yard. He's, he's down for sure. I don't think there's any doubt about that. No. Is there with the left? Watch the left knee, folks. Yeah. Is he down? He's down. So knees down and the elbows down. So they're gonna they're gonna take a look at it. They're gonna stop play. Randall there's gonna be a communicator. A the previous play is under further review. No, no question about it. I'm surprised the back judge didn't see that down there, Herbie. To tell you the truth, there's the back judge right there. Spin around, down left leg. Yeah, the le you can't miss that. There's no question about it. The interesting thing about this, Brent, is the exact same play, one time to the right, and then they came back to it to the left, and Moore, who has really stepped up in recent weeks with the injury to Hubert Anium, does a nice job here in back-to-back -back plays, and both times the linebacker's out of position. But, yeah, you, you called it right on the, on the field. I'm surprised that the officials missed that. It was pretty... Pretty obvious that his knee was down. But again, watch the play action. See how he just, just enough there to make these linebackers freeze. They respect the receivers underneath. The receivers underneath grab the linebackers' attention. And there's a huge window right behind the linebackers for Brandon Whedon and that accuracy to once again be on display. And uh, Herbie, uh, Todd Monken, the new offensive coordinator for Coach Gundy, and he was with the Jacksonville Jaguars mm -hmm. for the last four years, he said that Whedon throws every throw imaginable and he's never seen a youngster including guys in the NFL who are so comfortable in the shotgun throwing the quick screens into the middle of the right or the left and he can also throw the fade he said he just reads that automatically he's got every throw at his command it's rare to see a guy that has the big strong arm and then the touch to go along with it mm -hmm. and that's exactly what he has he can make every throw you want him to make the best thing about him Brent is his poise in the pocket and his footwork He's a baseball player, he's an athlete, he's got the strong arm, and then he brings all the intangibles to the table. You and I have seen a lot of great quarterbacks. We saw Andrew Luck last week at Stanford. This guy is one of the best in the country. The bundle is down before he fumbles the ball. The Oklahoma State call, first and 10 at the 18 yard line. Please reset the game clock to 8.43. 8.43, please. So it is uh, Oklahoma State football. He was down with the knee. They retain possession. They've got a first and ten. I think he said put the game clock at 843. So here is Whedon Herbie. You talked about he's nearby Edmond, Oklahoma. About 45 minutes from here if you move it a little bit. And the Yankees, of course, drafted him in the second round. Get a little age. Yeah, he does. And when you talk to him, it's, you really feel like you're talking to an NFL quarterback with his, his approach and his demeanor. He's married. He's 28 years old. Uh, the cool thing is he still is able to blend in with the guys. He's one of the guys, which is important when it comes to the chemistry of a football team. He's taking golf. He plays out at Carston Creek Golf Club. <laughs> <laughs> they have a great golf program here. And there he is hitting him three times in a row. Tracy Moore. 
Uh, first down. So suddenly Moore is more prolific tonight than number 81. Justin Black. Justin will go back to that huddle and say, my turn. He's Especially over there. down in the red zone. See, if they see one-on-one, -on -one, folks, forget about it. Here comes the fade to 81. Soft coverage on him. Quick throw to him because it was soft. Strength touchdown. You can't play him that soft because you're not going to be able to tackle him. That's how strong he is. 6'1", 215 pounds, junior from Ardmore, Oklahoma. And Pistol Pete says, that's my man. Good thing Pistol Pete's not doing push-ups this year. It'd be a long year. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, if you play up tight on him, he's got the quickness to go around you on the fade. And if you play soft because you respect his ability to get by you, then he's physical enough, as we just saw there, to be able to shake a tackle and get upfield. He's a nightmare for a corner on an island. Here's Quinn Sharp again. Tack it and on. Wes Harlan was the holder. Put it down. So the scoring machine is underway again. A two touchdown lead. We'll be right back. Well, 9 a.m. Central Sunday NFL countdown presented by IBM on ESPN. Are you still alive in your survivor pool? Who will you pick? Will you check the injuries with the gang tomorrow? Are you thinking about Green Bay out in San Diego? Beware, folks. Beware of that one. How about the Red Rifle? The Cincinnati Bengals. How oh, about they're it? getting after it a little bit. Much Love better than anybody it. expected. Yeah. Andy Dalton, yes, a sir. rookie from TCU. Red Rifle. We had him. He's doing a great job. Yeah, so here is the kickoff back at the end zone. They'll take a knee. Come on out. Lisa, Justin Blackwood has some many, many nice stories about him around Stillwater. Yeah, certainly are, Brent. I was talking to him before the game, and he wanted me to give a shout-out to one of his best buddies, 9-year-old Olivia Hamilton. She isn't here at the game tonight, but she's surely at home watching. In 2009, she was diagnosed with cancer, went through 108 weeks of chemotherapy. Now she's in clinical remission. During that time, she got to meet Justin, and they became fast friends. She gave him a pink bracelet that he wears on his left wrist every game. He was telling me today that he talked to her just a couple of days ago. She's doing fine. Uh, and he said every time he looks down at that bracelet, he thinks of her. All Guys? right, Lisa, thank you. Here comes Lockett for Kansas State. <laughs> Ridden out of bounds. To go back uh, to Blackman. Uh, now, Leva, we hope you're enjoying the game tonight as we've got a, yeah, a penalty flag a here. Hit. She's at the uh, Sperry Elementary School and, of course, one of his biggest fans. And uh, they met during that special spectators game that Lisa told you about. What a, what a wonderful story. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number eight. That 15 yard penalty be added to the dead ball spot. First down. And that is Lowe who committed that penalty. Yeah, these safeties uh, have been challenged by their coaching staffs to get involved in this running game, and that's exactly what they're doing. Dayton Lowe pushes him out of bounds. Good call by the officials, but the aggression is there by both the linebackers from Oklahoma State and the safeties. Look how they're crowding the line of scrimmage. Penalty flags flying, and Oklahoma State say that there was movement That's in right. that offensive line. Saying, if you're Number Kansas seven, State, your, your, your margin of error down. is so slight, you just cannot have these kind of calls. And that was Zach Hansen who committed that foul, and nobody knows it any better than Bill Snyder. He was right in that game a week ago against Oklahoma in late in the first half. Turned it over. Sooners kicked a field goal. And they completely dominated the second half up in Manhattan. So now from that pistol formation, Klein will hand off, and this is going to be second down and long. Wildcats unable to escape their own territory. They're at the 36-yard line as Blotnick makes the stop and to take a look back, leading 17-14, and then they were outscored 44-0 in the last. 44 and change of that game by the Sooners. Second and 13. Complete to about the 42 yard line. Thompson, the receiver, 
but they're still not in good shape here Herbie for this third down now for them to, for them to be in position to move the ball and sustain drives they've got to have more success on first and ten and that false start pushed them back to first and 15 again they don't have the offense to recover from that they've got to be more in the second and seven third and short these third and longs make it tough on Klein. so he's got five targets split out wide trying to pick up the seven and it's deflected and they'll be forced to punt it again Cooper Bassett with the defensive ends making a play for Bill Young that time and Blackman is going back to try his hands at another punt return Look at Bassett number 80 great athlete gets his arm up to be able to knock that ball down in Kansas State third and seven or longer they're dead last in the Big 12 at converting in those situations so they've got to be able to again have better success on first and second down to get to more manageable third down so here comes Ryan door to punt it again he hung the last one really up in the air Blackman's gonna take a crack fumble dive for the loose ball remember Blackman juggled the first one on the fair catch and we will let the officials sort this out put the ball on the ground Kansas State comes away. That's Herzog underneath number 59 and hands the ball to the referee. Well, these are the things that have to happen for Kansas State. You know, they, they've got to be able to get a break. And sure handed Justin Blackman, Mr. Do It All, makes a huge mistake. And Kansas State is there with Herzog to be able to capitalize on it. And now their offense, see if they can take advantage of a mistake and try to put points on the board the way the Cowboys did earlier. Colin Klein, the quarterback. He's got Chris Harper, his wideout, split far out to the right as he checks the sideline with the coaching staff. Justin Gilbert, they run it in the other direction. Stopped just short of the 20 yard line. They started this on the 23 yard line of the Cowboys, easily their best field position of the game. Elkins makes the stop. And their adjustment to Bill Young crowding the line of scrimmage is first and 10 spreading them out with four receivers that time and if they're going to pressure him and they're going to attack the line of scrimmage sometimes when you put four receivers in you can see where the pressure is and you can get the numbers to your advantage to allow you to run the ball a little bit better but right now that offensive line they're just not sustaining blocks against the athletic Oklahoma State front now John Hubert is the running back right alongside Klein they bring power into the backfield. Klein, the good runner, keeps it, and he's to the 18-yard line, and this will be third down and about five as Brown up from the corner to make the stop. And they're basically using Klein as a tailback. I mean, this is a, a running back, quarterback that's essentially a running back. So it, in theory, it gives you an extra man for the defense to have to account for. And that's why, again, they are determined to crowd that line because of Colin Klein's ability to run the football. Giant tight end on the left side, six foot eight inch Andre McDonald. Klein checks again over to that sideline. Now gets the play straight. He's got one second of time that has to burn a timeout. So they waste too much time getting the play straight, and they burn a timeout here. Coming up on third and five, he didn't want to make it a third and ten. So he took the time out, and he'll go over and talk to the coaches. Well, it's interesting, Herbie, that uh, what we saw here tonight, uh, Coach Gundy experimenting with Blackman back returning punts. Yeah, we had that graphic that that was the first one he returned all year, juggled a little bit. Now he's fumbled it and turned it over. So I think that that experiment will probably end. <laughs> well, the other thing you got to think about here is Kansas State has to be able to get the breaks like they just got. And then they have to capitalize on it. You, you said in the open, Oklahoma State's defense, they lead the nation now with 30 turnovers on the year. And then their offense scores so quickly mm -hmm. that for Kansas State, when they get breaks like this, they're going to have to see if they can execute and be able to do it. Right now, their offensive line, they're not doing a lot to help Colin Klein out. And it's making it a lot tougher on him to be able to execute. So here we go now with the third down and five. Bill Young, during that timeout, he had a chance to adjust what he wanted to show. And Klein tripped up at the 20-yard line, a loss. And
let's see if Snyder goes for the field goal. Nick Pitts was there, the offensive lineman. They get kind of tangled up, and they'll send Anthony Cantelli out. Brent, watch the speed again and the quickness that this offensive line is struggling with. That time they were Pitts was trying to pull around 50, but he doesn't even have time to be able to get around the edge because of again the quickness of that defensive line. So here comes the the field goal. The holder will put it down at the 27. So it's a 37-yard attempt. This young man hit a 54-yarder last week back in Manhattan. And so Kansas State takes advantage of the turnover. They're on the board, but they're still trailing here, 14-3. Boone Pickens Stadium, Stillwater, Oklahoma. And it will be the Cowboys returning this pooch punt. And a big gap, 35. Out to the 42 and down at the 45 is Josh Stewart, the freshman from Denton, Texas, not too far from Dallas. And Brandon Whedon right now in total control. He's not missed a pass. Here's the play action. We talked about how it gets the linebackers out of position. Moore gets behind it and they're able to pick up yards. Look, he looks downfield. He's showing pass. Then he comes back to the screen or to the draw. He fakes the draw and then he gets behind coverage again and shows that accuracy downfield. Randall is the running back. Number nine, Staley. And what a story he is. Young man that something really might not ever walk again after the severe injury that he suffered. Scored a touchdown against Baylor the other day. Play action. Whedon sets, fires downfield, and picked off at the 24 yard line by Hartman. Boy, Hartman does an outstanding job. We just talked about the job that Whedon's been doing with his eyes and how, how much he's in control. Hartman just sits back there in center field and reads the eyes of the quarterback, and that's one of the rare times you're going to see Brandon Whedon get a little bit greedy trying to make a decision. Watch the eyes. He just sits back, falls to the middle of the field, reads the eyes. The ball is actually thrown to the receiver behind uh, Hartman, but Hartman goes up and makes a very athletic play to make that interception. Whedon's eighth interception of the season and it's picked up by the young man from Wichita. Klein off a pump fake, now steps back, now fires downfield, and that was almost picked off by Gilbert. Harper was the target, but Gilbert was all over him. There wasn't much daylight there on that throw for Klein. No, they took a shot here on first and 10 because of the man-to-man -man coverage that they're facing. And I'll tell you what, Justin Gilbert did. Watch for He sits with him. It's a double move. Harper tries to go by him. Gilbert did everything perfectly except catch the football. He's in position there for yet another turnover for this Oklahoma State defense. But he comes up with great coverage but doesn't make the interception. Pease is in now for the Wildcat. This will be the second play run out of it. Trying to pick his daylight, not much there. That defense jumped all over him as we go to Robert Flores in the studio for an update. Hey Brent, Taco Bell studio update. LSU Alabama, not the only big game of the SEC. Number nine, South Carolina. Number seven, Arkansas. Tyler Wilson to Jarius Wright. Hogs continue to lead. 24 to 14 at home on ESPN and LSU and Alabama scoreless, but Cade Foster has missed two field goals for the Tide, who just picked off Jarrett Lee. And Robert, here is the fifth third down of the opening quarter for Kansas State. They've converted only one of four so far. Klein all alone. Gets good time, but nobody breaks free. Finally, sideline and out of bounds for a first down at the 37-yard line. Sheldon Smith from Culver City, California, his first catch of the night. Nice job by Sheldon Smith to work back to his quarterback. Finally, somebody helped him. And I'll tell you, gets the left foot down, has possession of the football. Colin Klein is known for his ability to run, but that time, instead of bailing out of there, Brandon, relying on his athletic ability, does a good job of not giving up on the play, and then eventually there on third and down, finds Smith, who's a great athlete, and gets his feet down for the first. Now Klein goes up underneath B.J. Finney, his center. 
And they're going to bring an end around. Double reverse Lockett. Klein is out blocking. Lockett to the 50. Lockett breaks free to the 30. Touchback to the 20. And Lockett finally run out of bounds inside the five yard line. A beautiful double reserve reverse taking advantage of the great pursuit. And it's a 63 yard gain by Lockett. And taking advantage of the aggression of this defense on an early down. How about Colin Klein, by the way, Brent, leading the way as a quarterback. 6'5, 226. He's taking on anybody that he can until at the end, Martin knocks him down. But watch the quarterback here lead the way. Lockett's got tremendous speed. Good effort there by Hubert as well. Klein staying with him. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a great call on first and 10 to take advantage of an overly aggressive defense here, defending the run. They got him out of position, and Lockett made him pay for it. Now we see that Bassett shaken up, coming to the sideline. That was Lowe, who finally ran him down at the five-yard line and out of bounds, and K-State is in business right now if they can cash in here. Pease is the running back, and he's got the Wildcat lined up again. So Klein, after coming downfield as a blocker, Bill has come right back with that Wildcat. He's seen something he thinks he can take advantage of here. He sprints outside, touchdown Kansas State. So down by 14, the Wildcats put nine, and they're an extra point away from 10. Cantelli will add the extra point if he can. Boy, it's feeling a little bit like last week. As you said, they got down, and the Kansas State fought back against the Sooners. Direct snap, direct snap to Pease. Just a zone play off to the left. They got the blocking that they needed, and you love to see the receiver, Chris Harper, helping out to push that defensive back to the outside, and it made it pretty easy there for Pease to get upfield for that touchdown. So turnovers are killing Oklahoma State. Kansas State converts two into ten points and they trail it by four as you can see right there on our turnover story but this Kansas State team has to be awfully happy with what just happened here in this quarter with 125 to go they put themselves right back in the thick of it you know, one of the things we knew that Bill Snyder talked to his team about are the little things that can add up to victory got to win special teams you got to win turnover margin against a team that's number one in the nation little things again field position limit the big plays third down defense when you get a chance to get Brandon Whedon off the field you got to do it all those things sound like coach talk but for Kansas State we'll look at back at these things at the end of this game and into the fourth quarter to see if they are able to be successful in these areas you can also add time of possession on that as well to try to keep again that offense from Oklahoma State on the sidelines all right, Stewart and Gilbert are back deep to return this kickoff, and Justin Gilbert has returned two for touchdowns. This one will be fielded at the nine by Justin. Trying to stretch the coverage team at the 33-yard line. Let's see if he wasn't out of bounds back at the 22. Let me... He was tightrope walking down that sideline and the referee has gone back to the 23 yard line. Let's see where the line judge and the umpire, the umpire's gonna bring it back. So he was out of bounds at the 23 yard line. So Whedon's last pass was intercepted by Hartman. Kansas State drives for the touchdown. Whedon on first down, throws in underneath to Anderson. Isaiah Anderson's first catch of the night. Isaiah Anderson is one of the fastest players on this football team. Isaiah Anderson and Justin Gilbert. That would be a heck of a foot race. The defensive back and a wide receiver. Now they pick up the tempo a little bit. And Randall for the first down. He's out to the 34-yard line. And Latoui makes the stop. You know, Whedon telling us this week, you know, especially after a mistake like that, we just need to get that first, first down to start a drive. It seems to create tempo, and we get really going and get that defense on their heels. Whedon wants to set the quick screen to Randall, 
And the blockers were a little bit to the right of him, and uh, the tackle is made at the 38-yard line. Latui, who has been very active here yeah. in the last couple of plays. And that's what you love to see against a screen, and the defensive lineman able to feel it and able to chase it down from uh, from the inside out. And Latui, the last two plays involved, and he has to check out. He's using a little bit too much energy there. Young man from Salt Lake City. <laughs> Second down, Whedon empties out the backfield. Offensive line, but it's deflected. A little bit low trajectory, leaving after the offensive line had given him plenty of time, and uh, Kidry on the field came in on the play. And against this quick release and the way Whedon likes to get the ball out of his hands, Gidry did the only thing you can do as a defensive lineman, just try to get a hand up and knock that ball down. So it's third and seven here, still in the first quarter. Bounce, one hop. They'll be forced to punt. So Kansas State has turned things around here. Meanwhile, in the LSU-Alabama game, they are scoreless. They have gone to the second quarter in that game. Whedon a little bit out of sync after the interception. Kansas State's defense does a good job of being able to get in position. And that time you wonder if Whedon, who looked like he wanted to get the ball downfield, wasn't able to get his feet set and step into that throw out to Randall. Here comes Sharp, one of the great punters. Thrills it. Lockett trying to pick his way, and he's just short of the 25-yard line. There is the freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And this is our conference update, brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. The big story, of course, is Oklahoma wins, yes, but they lose Ryan Broyles, their great wide receiver, for the remainder of the season. Herbie with that ACL, what a blow for the Sooners. Yeah. And that's a week after losing Dominique Whaley as well. And that team all of a sudden going to be tested once again to find out what kind of depth they have. It's happened to Bob Stoops in the past, and they've had to juggle some people around. We'll see what they do before they get ready for some more games coming up in future weeks. And, of course, Bedlam at the end of the year. So Hubert in as the running back. Took a long time to get that handoff. Gave the defense too much time to jump on that play, and Elkins was there as we come to the end of the first quarter. So Oklahoma State jumps out to a two-touchdown lead, but then they turn it over twice, and the Wildcats are right back in it, trailing 14-10. We welcome you back to Stillwater, the number three team in the nation. Once had a 14-point lead. Now it's only four. Colin Klein on the field. Hubert, the Wildcat running back right next to him. And, uh, Irby, these guys have been pretty efficient after these two turnovers. That double reverse, maybe to see if that slows down the aggressiveness from uh, Oklahoma State's defense. Klein comes up complete to Chris Harper. So if you take a look at how they're staying in, there's no question it's these two turnovers. And Justin Blackman, one of the best all-around players in college football, makes a mistake on the punt return. And then Brandon Whedon, they're two superstars. He gets a big greedy, tries to go downfield. The interception by Hartman. And Kansas State taking advantage of those opportunities. Peace gets it in. They've got a field goal. And they're 10 points tonight, both uh, being uh, able to be set up by those turnovers by the Cowboys. Need five on this third down, and they've got it. Complete to the 37-yard line to Tremaine Thompson, who has been very active here tonight for the Wildcats. Oklahoma State decided to blitz the, the safety low, but what's interesting is the cushion you see out here on the outside. At, or, I'm sorry, to your left there. It's just such a soft spot in an area where on third down, it makes it very easy for the quarterback to be able to read that and make the throw. Four wide receivers for the Wildcats. Klein getting good time from his offensive line, chucks it in underneath, and he's got Harper with an inside route. And let's get an update from Robert Flores in the studio. All right, for an update on number one against number two, the Crimson Tide have missed three field goals thus far. Cade Foster, two. Jeremy Shelley here. This one from 49 yards away is blocked. Still no score. Second quarter in T-Town. Brent. Ah, uh, check mark for the Mad Hatter in the kicking game. <laughs> He's got that great punter from Australia. Second down. Klein throws the screen. Now to the running back, and he dives to midfield. John Hubert from Waco, Texas, picks up the first down. And this 
game has turned dramatically around for Kansas State. Boy, Kansas State, this is exactly the way Bill Snyder would love to draw it up. I don't think it's just the turnovers that they've been able to capitalize on. I really think you go back to that, the, the double reverse, and not only that, they're throwing the ball more on first and 10, and they're getting this Oklahoma State defense now to lose some of that aggressiveness, and it's opening up the rest of their offense. Klein going deep, got a receiver, caught at the 18-yard line. Thompson again, the young man from Jenks, Oklahoma. That's one of the great high school programs in this state. And the sophomore comes down with another catch, and that's for 34 yards. Brent, you're going to see the option look here to try to bait these boys right here, the linebackers and safeties. Receiver comes from here, and there's nobody left in the inside. See the option look? Linebackers and safeties bite up. And the receiver's able to get right behind him with Tremaine Thompson. Now they're at the 16-yard line and knock it on the door. Klein, a keeper. And he slams to the 9-yard line. And Jones makes the stop for the Cowboys, who are back on their heels all of a sudden. And now you go back to running the football. Boy, they're doing a really nice job of mixing up the play calling right now. And it's putting the Oklahoma State defense, as you said, back on their heels. It sets up the run, the play-action pass on first and 10. And right now, the Cowboys defense doesn't know if it's coming or going. That's 189 yards offense for K-State to 112 for Oklahoma State. Klein with that quick pitch slip screen outside and it'll be a first and goal Sexton the freshman from Kansas and it'll be first and goal and how about this the Wildcats could jump back and take the lead here Brent it's a little unorthodox with Colin Klein but I love the guy I mean he plays so hard he leaves his heart literally out there on this field and it's really a cat and mouse game with this option look trying to get him to bite up on the option look at time from time to time he'll throw it out there in a hurry and other times he's holding the ball and running with it and he is a very good runner very dangerous down here in the red zone here he comes Klein battling touchdown Kansas State leads it Colin Klein takes it into the end zone and he has 17 rushing touchdowns. Can that possibly be that many? That's what my number says here. Yes, it's confirmed. That's 17 <laughs> rushing touchdowns. Well, when they get into the red zone, he's going to keep the football. Watch the block right there. 37 does a nice job. Braden Wilson of opening that up. And again, the quarterback basically being the running back in this offense. Ken Telly. He tacks on the extra point. After surrendering 14 unanswered, they've come back with 17 of their own. How about these Wildcats? Go for it, Willie. Well, Brent, there are a couple things here that stand out. First of all, the left guard, Nick Pitts, makes a great block. And the fullback right here also will come in. Do a good job of opening things up here. Brandon Wilson takes out Tyler Johnson. Watch the guard here. Pitts come off of his block, and then he comes right here to be able to take away Markel Martin. And then the toughness right there at the end of the play by the quarterback, Colin Klein, going over top of Sean Lewis. Nice block. Beautiful job there by the big fullback, Wilson, to open that up. But I love the grittiness from Colin Klein running over that linebacker. So a little bit too easy for the Cowboys. They relaxed, and now for the two-yard line, Gilbert, their ace kick return man. Hurdles a defender, and he is out of bounds, and a penalty flag flies after the shove out of bounds. Around the 30-yard line, they could be tacking on more yards for this return for Justin. And we've seen a couple late hits. This one's going to be on Truman from Kansas State. Referee here tonight is Mike play. Defee. Uh, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit out of bounds. Number 27 of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. Well, 27 comes in low, but 21 comes in. Maybe they got a little confused with the numbers. Truman came in there really, really late when he's well out of bounds. 
Well, this week on uh, Monday Night Football, the Bears need a win to keep pace with the Lions. They face an Eagles team that's looking for its third straight win. So that'll be at 8.30 p.m. And here's a snap to Whedon. Whedon fires it off to Blackman underneath. And Blackman steps out of bounds after picking up eight yards on that play. Crosses midfield to the 46-yard line, actually, second and one. And they, he came all the way from the right side underneath the coverage, and they basically flooded the zone. The receivers to the left side just all ran the defensive backs off and opened everything up underneath for Blackman. Second down and one. Here comes Randall. That's a first down to the 41-yard line, and Arthur Brown. Now, Arthur Brown is a story. He's a young man from Wichita, Kansas, one of the great linebackers in the Big 12, and such a shame that his brother, Bryce Brown, didn't have the same work ethic. He was the running back. He suddenly walks away from the team, but not Arthur. He shows up every day and does his work, and he's a good one. Picked off! Intercepted, headed for the end zone, Whedon after him, and it's going to be an Allen Chapman touchdown. How about this, ladies and gentlemen? Two picks thrown by Whedon, and one's a pick six, and we got something brewing in Stillwater. And Brent, Whedon just takes too long. He's going to throw this ball off to the left. Look how he's waiting and waiting for Anderson, and he just telegraphed a pass this time. Chapman was sitting back behind Anderson, and simply just went around him and comfortably stepped in front of him and went right down the field for a touchdown. But I tell you what, that's the second time now that Brandon Whedon has made a mistake for this offense. And as the result, the Wildcats have jumped all over the number three team. Of the Folks, do I hear an ovation out in Boise, Idaho? Do I hear some people cheering right now? You bet I do. Number three is in deep trouble. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin', and Volkswagen, the all-new Volkswagen Passat. That's Das Auto. So we welcome you back. A stunning turnaround. The Wildcats with 24 unanswered points. Alan Chapman, number three, with a pick six from City College of San Francisco where he was a standout junior college defensive back. No one gets more production out of J.C. players in the country than Coach Bill Snyder in Manhattan, Kansas. Short kickoff, fielded at the 25-yard line. And penalty flag comes flying. Ball is out to the 38-yard line. Herschel Sims was the return man holding during the return number 14 return team 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down well, let's go back to this throw you have Brandon Whedon right here and Anderson's up here but what I want you to watch Brent is how long it takes him to make his mind up to throw the ball look how Anderson's just sitting out there waiting and waiting and waiting and by the time he decides to throw the ball Chapman doesn't have any threat downfield. He's just sitting behind Anderson, almost daring Whedon to throw it, and sure enough, he did, and Chapman stepped in front of that for the pick. Now, another J.C. youngster, Malone, is over on Blackman 101. Oh, yes, he's got six interceptions, Malone does. Whedon back to the middle, and he finds Tracy Moore again. First down at the 40-yard line. But the Blackman duel with Nigel Malone is becoming pretty interesting. The fourth time he's been able to get the ball to Moore over the middle of this Wildcat defense. They don't even look in Blackman's direction this time. He comes up over the top, and he hits Josh Stewart. That freshman again, Josh Cooper nicked, and we haven't seen him here tonight, even though he did work out in pregame warm-ups, but he's got a little bit of an injury. You can see some separation there from the receiver attacking these linebackers. Arthur Brown that time in coverage. Empty backfield. Now Whedon. 
Waits for somebody to come free, and in the middle, he's got a first down at the 31-yard line with Michael Harrison's first catch of the night. Yeah, they're attacking the linebackers this uh, these first th uh, three plays of this drive. Couple over the middle, one to the outside. That time they found Harrison working his way from the outside back to the end, and he got behind Lemur, Lemur number 23, the outside linebacker. Wheaton off the play action, the middle again. For a first and 10 at the 20 yard line, Tracy Moore, number 87, very productive here tonight. Fourth pass, fourth throw to the middle of the Wildcat defense, and Arthur Brown, Lemur, and Walker have got to do a better job of protecting. They've got to get some depth there because Moore and company are getting behind them in coverage. <laughs> now here's Wheaton again. Blackman, Blackman to the six-yard line, and it'll be first down and goal. So Blackman, who has a receiving touchdown here tonight, has given the Cowboys a first and goal. That's five now and five over the middle. And now that they're down inside the 10, just like we saw last time, this is where they love to feature Justin Blackman when he's one-on-one -on -one in that matchup with Malone. So now they've got the full house backfield, and the coaches here will tell you, Basically, it's like the wishbone when they line up. They show power left. Here comes Randall behind the lead blocker, stumbling to the two-yard line and down. Second and goal. Zimmerman with the stop for the Wildcats. That's just big on big, and Zimmerman, the safety, has to come up there and be willing to help out. Randall runs the football very, very hard in this area, and he's got a lot of, uh, lot of manpower to be able to follow there to the left side. Grant Garner is the center. He runs this offensive line. 74 bends back down now with the full house. Run right straight ahead of Randall, and he has stopped short. Now it's third and goal coming up. And credit Gidry with another fine play in the middle of that defense. Boy, great job that time by Gidry fighting off of his, of his blocker and getting around him with quickness to be able to keep them uh, from getting into the end zone. On third and goal, and Blackman again one-on-one -on -one off to the right. But they've shown no indication they're going to throw. He does this time fade the other side. And incomplete. Garrett with the coverage over there, and he was all over Michael Harrison. Good coverage. Well, Garrett is 5'8", Brandy. He's 5'8", about 175 pounds. Small, but very, very physical. He led this team in tackles. Gets his head turned around. I'll tell you, it was pretty close uh, to Harrison having a chance to make a play, but you got to give Garrett some credit. He's not a big corner, but he used his body that time to wall off Harrison from having a chance to make the catch. Now here's Quinn Sharp, and remember, Cowboys had a first and goal. This will be a 19-yard field goal, and if he makes it, it will snap that 24 unanswered streak by the Wildcats, and he nails it. Sends it through. But the dogfight continues in Stillwater. Let's see, Herbie. While you were off in Tuscaloosa, we loaded up. Oh, no. You are not a favorite to win this one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, Only coach to lead man. both these schools to a conference championship. I believe Oklahoma State in these days, Oklahoma A&M. <laughs> so now you can think about it, Herbie. If you pull this rabbit, out of your hat, man! I'm telling you, Oklahoma A&M. What? What? Hey, Kansas State to what, a what conference year was that? championship. What year was that, my Before friend? you were born. <laughs> 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 so here comes a sharp kickoff. Down, back of the goal line. Lockett is coming out. Lockett is slammed at the 26-yard line, 7:44. Now we go back to the quarterback, Colin Klein. Watch him go to the end zone here. This is the touchdown. Look at that blow on the shoulder. Lisa Salters, what are you hearing down below? Hey, Brent. Well, Colin Klein, I want you guys to keep an eye on him because he hasn't been out in the field since since that touchdown. Remember that pick six? So he hasn't been on the field for a while. Since he's been over here on the sideline, he's been throwing the ball, looking like he's trying to put some zip on it, but grimacing. I saw him doing some arm circles, so his right shoulder is bothering him. Don't know the extent of the injury, but his right shoulder is bothering him right Well, and they have him hand the ball off that time to uh, Hubert Herbie. And, and, you know, Colin Klein, because of the way he plays and because the offense relies on him to essentially be a tailback many times within this offense he has taken a lot of hits 
the wear and tear has been on him all year. They played Oklahoma last week. So I think he came into this game already a bit banged up and just showing a lot of heart just to continue to try to play for his teammates. In fact, we talked to him this week about showing heart and playing for this team. Still plenty of the time that following his changeup. Now we're going to see him throw it. Comes to the sideline, deflected, intercepted on the deflection. Another turnover. Thomas, the linebacker, he got a convoy down the sideline, and the Cowboys are in business. The ball is going to be spotted inside the 10 yard line. And how about this deflection interception? Broderick Brown, folks, we remember a year ago against Oklahoma. One of the great deflections of all time. Now they get another deflection. Brent, you can see Lockett right there on the ground, the receiver to the inside. That's who he really wanted to throw the ball to. Instead, he comes off and just throws it up to Harper. A good effort by Brown to knock it away. And we'll see whether or not uh, Thomas was able to stay in bounds. Good awareness there to make the pick. But Colin Klein tries to get the ball to the inside receiver Lockett. The coverage is too good. He essentially just throws it up to Harper. And Oklahoma State comes up with a big turnover. So they're in business with Whedon. And he's got Randall and Herschel Sims, the youngster, flashes it to Randall, and uh, it is stopped. He wants a timeout. I'm sure he's trying to get things organized, and he might want to take another look to see whether or not Thomas stayed in bounds. Our replays look like he did a good job of staying in bounds. Brent, I mentioned how he wanted to throw the ball to Lockett, who was working in here, but watch how physical the coverage is. Klein's staring him down. He wants to go right there, but bang! He takes a hit by Martin, goes to the ground. Instead of finding a check down, he just throws it out there to the left to Harper. So the Cowboys are in business with the ball being spotted on the five yard line. And there is that little rascal, number 19, the junior from Houston. 5'8, 185 pounds. That gets it to top. Remember this, folks? That is him again. This <laughs> was deserving of a Herbie oh, this, a year ago. This was a Herbie, an SB, and anything else you could throw at it. That was one of the plays of the year in all of sports. That is Sean Lewis last year making it. And here tonight, James Thomas, another one of the backers. So you talk about a rascal keeping it in play. Why, I dare say he's deserving of a second Herbie. <laughs> Look at We keep that right here in Stillwater close to the Heisman. That's Barry Sanders hardware over there. How about oh, that? Oh, you're beautiful. Now we got Brandon Whedon. <laughs> so this is the second time, Herbie, that they have started down around the five-yard line. Remember, they started that one scoring play at the four. First and goal. Timeout was called. Lock it down to the last one. Wheaton again firing touchdown. Easy that time to Tracy Moore, the junior from down the road in Tulsa. That's how you take advantage of an opportunity reminiscent of the first turnover by Kansas State. Oklahoma State got a break in the first play. They scored with a Randall touchdown. This time they're able to throw it to Moore, who's starting to have a big night for this Oklahoma State offense. But give credit there to Justin Blackman for getting a lot of attention and setting that up for Moore behind the coverage. Man, you're sharp. We're back where we started, Herbie. Got a ball All game. even. This is a dandy. A lot more offense than that one in Tuscaloosa, folks. Come on back. Well, we're on Dr. Pepper's road to the championship in New Orleans, and we've got a tie game. Number three, 24, Kansas State, 24 here. There's Lockett. This time he's going to come out. Young man from Tulsa breaks free. And he is down at the 37-yard line. He's going to be as dangerous as his daddy and his uncle. <laughs> you know, Brent, sometimes 
even when Blackman doesn't make a catch, he's able to draw some attention. He's underneath. Here's Moore who's going to get behind. But watch what happens with Justin Blackman with the outside linebacker, Lemur, and the safety, Hartman. There's a little bit of confusion. And look how it opened it up. You can see it, the, the two come together and start to kind of discuss this. They want to be aware of where Blackman is. Lemur looks him up. And by him looking him up, it opens up a nice window there behind the coverage. And a great read and throw that time by Brandon Whedon. And Lockett a little shaken up goes to the sideline here. So Klein slips it out and the receiver's down at the 40-yard line on first down. Continue to mix up the play calling on first and 10, doing a really good job. I think the adjustment by Bill Snyder and his staff offensively has been to slow down the aggressive attitude by Oklahoma State by throwing more on first and 10, by attacking more on the perimeter, try to take advantage of them being out of position by being overly aggressive. And since they've done that, it's really slowed the Cowboys down. So here's second down and eight for Klein. And he hands it off to Hubert. Hubert moves the pile. Strong run that time by number 33. You gotta love little backs that, that run with a chip on their shoulder. 5'7, 185 pounds out of Waco. It's also a great blocker. And this, this is where Kansas State wants to be on third down. Not, not third and seven or longer, where they're dead last in the Big 12 and converting. They want to be right here, third and four, where you, you, can you give Colin Klein a chance to run or throw. Third down here. Yeah, we've got five minutes remaining. Klein throws for the first down near midfield to Chris Harper. The man from Wichita, Kansas. See, third and four, they get four and a half. That's that's more in their territory. That's what that's their comfort zone, and that's where they want to be. Coaches say staying on schedule. That's an offense like this that needs to be a third and two, third and four. Gives him a lot more options. A nice throw that time by Klein. Surprising soft coverage there by Oklahoma State. So now on the first down at midfield. Klein and the Wildcats. Pitch on the option. And no gain coming. A good stop on Hubert by the defense. And coming up was Martin, number 10. Well, that was a heck of a play by Martin of just getting off the block. Watch how quickly he comes up. Nice read by Klein. Look at the top of the screen. See how he gets off of the block by the attempted block that time by the freshman Lockett. He's able to get away from him and then watch this hit at the end of the play. It's a big time play by Markel Martin, the senior. Now second down and 10 coming at the midfield strike. <laughs> Deflected, incomplete, and it'll be third down and 10. Blatnick, Jamie Blatnick. He's a very, very good defensive end. He's from Texas and a good play here. Just a tough guy from Salina, Texas, just overpowering Offner, the right tackle. Kansas State fortunate that that was called an incompletion. It's the right call, but Jamie Blacknick could see the seven sacks, nine and a half tackles for a loss. When he pins his ears back, he's a force to, to deal with off of the edge of this defense. Here's the third down for Klein and the Wildcats. Deflected, and they'll be forced to punt. Last two times, Colin Klein there on second and third down had to throw the football just out of sync. And a good job by Oklahoma State up front of getting a push and getting the hands up to be able to bat those balls down. And again, this is not an offense that's going to have a lot of success when they're facing third down and long. And then they're going to give number 81 Another crack at it. Ryan Dorr, the punter. Blackman fumbled one away earlier. Led to a Kansas State score. 
And this one, not a good punt, going to go out of bounds. And so, Kirby, here we are now. Uh, Who's the only coach to lead both Oklahoma State, then A&M, and Kansas State to a conference championship? I have no idea. He has no chance. No Bob. chance. No chance. I, 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 I'm waving Happy the white flag. Happy Waldorf. I know, Three say. Missouri Valley titles, Kansas State, 1934, Big Six. There's Pappy. That's a Hall of Famer for you, folks. Back in the days after Pop Warner, there was Pappy Waldo. He was a good coach. I'm gonna, one of these years, I'm going to get that Went one. to Northwestern. Yeah. Okay, they went out to Cal. Absolutely. And Wheaton is back with the, uh, with the handoff, Joseph Randall. And Williams making the stop after that 19-yard punt. So, Herbie, a bad, bad punt. Pappy would be very it'd unhappy be, be with a 19-yard punt. Fundamentals. Bill Snyder, <laughs> I'm sure a big fan of Pappy and his fundamentals and everything that he preaches. That time, Meshack Williams on first and 10. A huge play getting penetration and pushing Oklahoma State back. Fake now. Drop it off to Blackman on a crossing route. Steps out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Not much doing. Much better awareness that time of feeling Blackman coming underneath the coverage from the right, moving over to the left of the defense. And we welcome those of you who watched LSU and Alabama play to a field goal tie in the first half. You're watching number three, Oklahoma State, right now with its hands full against Kansas State. We have just about three minutes remaining in the first half, and breaking free is Tracy Moore, who has been the big go-to receiver tonight for Oklahoma State, and they've moved the ball to midfield here. And they're going to go tempo here. Moore now seven catches and 122 yards on the game. So from that pistol, the hurry up. Here's Blackman, one blocker out in front. He's a load as he picks up about three yards. And Malone, the corner who's been on him all night, able to get him out of bounds. Oklahoma State went out to a 14-point lead, then gave up 24 unanswered. And now the Cowboys come back with 10 of their own. And we are deadlocked at 24 here in Stillwater. Randall trapped on the delay makes the most of it as he tries to get back to the line of scrimmage but it's going to be a third down for the number three team in the nation Oklahoma State as you can see the sequence of runs that we've had here in the first half Chris Kosh the defensive coordinator from Kansas State running bodies on and off the field trying to deal with this tempo and trying to avoid the fatigue that can set in facing this kind of offense so Whedon from the gun fires complete when he works to that side, you know who he's going to find. Justin Blackman, last year's Bolitnikoff winner and a favorite to repeat here this year. And, and Brent Malone is in zone coverage. He stayed up close with Randall, and because he stayed up close, there was a nice big uh, window to be able to throw behind Malone and an easy throw for Brandon Whedon. So you LSU and Alabama fans can look at this offense. More of a spread attack. They don't use tight ends. They sometimes will go to a full house and wonder what will happen if your favorite team meets them in New Orleans. There's a chance that can happen. You can see that the Cowboys spread the field. Rank number three right now and unbeaten and back in that pistol formation that has become the rage. Off a of play fake, Wheaton comes firing back and here's Blackman. And Blackman dives across the 15-yard line, and it's a first down and 10 for the Cowboys, the big fella who fumbled away a punt, which set up a K-State score. Now starting to move the chains as we come down to the final 127. Where they stretch you horizontally, vertically, three receivers to the left and left that time. Blackman one-on-one -on -one and a good throw to the backside. Motions the backfield empty. Here comes Blackman. On a screen to the middle and not much doing. Wildcats were ready for that play, and it'll be second down. Oklahoma State with all three of its timeouts. They've got just over a minute here in the first half. Defensive line working hard to try to stay up with this offense. The tempo, Lutui, 92 that time. The junior college transfer able to catch up to Justin Blackman. Randall is the running back alongside Whedon. Whedon incomplete, and this will bring up third down right now. 
on the night. Whedon 20 of 26 for 248 yards. 200 interceptions, though, were very unusual for him to go along with his two touchdown passes. So it is third down here for head coach Mike Gundy there in the middle and the Cowboys. Five wide receivers. And it's deflected. That should be field goal time. They have a very good kicker in Quinn Sharp as he trots on attempting to give Oklahoma State the lead before the intermission. Bit of a gamble here by Kansas State. They brought one more than the offensive line could handle, and it's Volker, who's typically in that backfield causing havoc. That time he's untouched, comes off the edge, is able to knock that ball down on third down. So this ball's going to be put down very near the 20-yard line. So very close to a 30-yard attempt here. And the Cowboys with 38 seconds to go in the first half regain the lead. We take a look at the Pacific Life game summary and Herbie it's a comparison of Whedon and Klein and for some of those folks who have been watching the other game give everybody an update here. Well Brandon Whedon obviously does do it in a different ways 2027 a big thing you mentioned the two interceptions really turned this game around along with the Justin Blackman fumble on the punt return and Colin Klein just kind of steady Eddie. Throwing the ball a little bit more than maybe we anticipated. 11 of 18 has been running the football tonight as well. And I think yeah, this is going to set up for a big second half. You know, it's interesting in the other game, low scoring. I think a lot of the experts, did you think it was going to be low scoring? I think most people yeah. did, yeah. But you also anticipate maybe that one big play in special teams or maybe a big pass that could end up changing the momentum. And maybe now that we're moving into the second half, could end up changing the game and maybe the outcome. Right, and Alabama missing some field goals in that first half. Yeah. But you know that punter, from LSU, you and Bradley. I had him out of Australia. Yeah. He is a real weapon. Well, and, and in a game where field position is so important, um, you're talking about having a chance to maybe pin Alabama in some crucial moments in the game deep inside their own territory. That could be very, very big. But Alabama defense has played well in the first half. Yeah, and here, of course, we've had a little more offense as Tyler Lockett, the freshman from Tulsa, brings it out. And a reminder that with a win last weekend, smoke. Tony Stewart surged to within eight points of Carl Edwards. They're battling out. We've only got three races to go in the chase. This is a very exciting track, sometimes dangerous down there at Texas. You can see the standings of our top five, but Tony Stewart could be a big story in this as he sets chase after Carl Edwards. You've been calling him for about four or five weeks now. You've been saying every time you read that promo, you say something about smoke. That's it. That's our man. And the Missouri Tigers holding him off so far. He's a big college football fan, too. <laughs> First down and 10 now coming up for the Wildcats as we bring down the closing half minute here of the first half and what has been a very entertaining game. And there's the running back for a first down. That is John Hubert who has carried the bulk of the load here tonight, Herbie. You know, the offense isn't built necessarily to, to go into the hurry up the way Oklahoma State is, but after that big play, well, they're still kind of taking their time here. Now he's starting to pick it up. They only have the one timeout, but they have a field goal kicker who made a 54-yarder last week in Kentelli against Oklahoma. So let's see what they can do with the final 14, and I think Bill Snyder and, is yeah. very content to Absolutely. go in. As he was still battling, he's moved the pile a couple of times uh, here tonight. Uh, Hubert's a tough kid sure from is. Waco, Texas. So that'll bring the first half to an end. And remember, Kansas State gets the ball to start the second half after deferring the call. Let's go down to Lisa Salters on the field. Lisa? Thank you, Brent. Mike, you guys jumped out to a quick 14-0 lead. What changed? Well, we turned the ball over, and uh, we've done a great job this year of taking care of the football. and. When you turn it over like that, you change the momentum. We gave them seven points, and so you can't do that. That's what that's what changed the events. Now, when they scored 24 unanswered, what did you say to your guys to get them to refocus and get back in? Well, they just need to get back to the basics. I mean, they're an experienced football team. We just needed them to go out and play the game. All right, thank you. Guys. All right, Lisa. Thank you very much. So an entertaining Big 12 showdown here as a very important game over in Tuscaloosa waits the second half.
we welcome you back to Saturday Night Football. Brandon Whedon and Oklahoma State with a three-point lead on Kansas State. As we take a look at tonight's Southwest Airlines playbook, and we can show you some of the touchdowns there, Herbie. Yeah, Brent, I, I really think a turning point in the first half were the turnovers by Oklahoma State. It got Kansas State back into the game. There's a touchdown by Peace, and this was a real backbreaker, potentially, for Oklahoma State. An interception by Chapman. He takes it all the way to the end zone. But Oklahoma State rallied back. Give them a lot of credit. Before the half, they're able to get some points on the board, a touchdown to Moore. And all of a sudden, we got an interesting second half setting up here in Stillwater. Absolutely. Now, remember your last week up in Manhattan, Kansas State pulled real close to Oklahoma, and then the second half went all Sooners. Now, the Wildcats have got to be careful here tonight. That's a great point, and I think the timing of that is important for Bill Snyder as he just talked to his team at halftime and getting their attention about the importance of this second half. The locket is stopped at the 15. We check in down below with Lisa Salter. Hey guys, Lisa. Well, I just talked to Bill Snyder, and he said that, you know, in that first half, they just made the kind of mistakes that disciplined teams do not make. He said, I'm proud that our guys are still in there, and I told him that I'm proud of that. He said, but we're still making the kind of mistakes that get you beat. And I said, hey, coach, even after you guys put 24 points on the board and seem to turn things around, he said, yeah, we're still making these mental mistakes. And I've told our guys that if we do that, we are going to get beat. We've probably given them 21 points, he told me. Guys. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, he's a stickler for details, always has been. Bill Snyder, one of the great coaching jobs of all time up in Manhattan. And here's the running back, Hubert. And Lewis makes the stop in our Pacific Life game summary here tonight. And we check in on some of the first half numbers. We've already told you the turnovers. And take a look at the points. We've had 31 of our points scored off turnovers. And the bottom line there, starting average starting field position for Oklahoma State near midfield and Kansas State's been put back a little bit deeper in their own territory which is tougher for their style of offense and here they are Herbie coming out from their own 16 yard line right now on second down Klein fires in underneath Harper slips a tackle and he's out of bounds at the 30 yard line Lisa Salter's talking about what Bill Snyder had mentioned and then these are the things that I think we feel that it's very very important for them to be able to be uh, be able to be competitive tonight the turnover margin which they've had an advantage special teams field position which has it which hasn't gone their way limiting the big plays and third down defense so Tremaine Thompson has been very active for them he's cut four for 58 yards he's down toward the bottom of your screen and uh, there's Harper and he's in deep trouble Harper is in deep trouble and he has run out of bounds at the 27 the pressure was brought by Lewis it's interesting Bill Snyder think about what he's done for the Kansas State program coming back three years after retiring and boy here they are again I think the big win against Miami Brent early in the year on the road when nobody really knew what to expect from this year's Kansas State team the way they're able to win that game I think really gave them confidence as they uh, as they continue to try to move through this year. Harper and Lockett will go off to Klein's left. Thompson comes off to the right. Klein gets time and comes in short underneath, and that's Travis Tannehill. We haven't called his name very often tonight. He's a junior from Overland Park, Kansas, and the big tight end makes the catch. <laughs> you know, Bill Snyder's been there a long time, and he stepped away, but tonight, 2011, See what that says? Holiday Bowl. Pacific Life. That's going back a few years. Maybe that's the good luck uh, parka that he pulled out tonight. So Hubert is the running back on this third and six for Klein. And the Wildcats, they go trips to the left. And they close the tight end down to the right. Tannehill. Klein flush going to be sacked at the 23-yard line by Caleb Levy. Right, I think there's some confusion, and you can see just at the last second there, he tried to move Hubert over here. The confusion comes right here because the linebacker and the defensive end end up crossing. And I think you see the left guard Pitt steps down to pick it up, but the running back Hubert was confused on who he was able to pick up, and it brought a man free. An easy play for Oklahoma State's defense. And Herbie Blackman is back. 
And they rush that punter. They almost got a piece of it. Blackman picks it up on the bounce. And he's to the 42-yard line. And that's where the Cowboys will have their first possession here of the second half. As Brandon Whedon here tonight, 20 at 27, 248 yards, two touchdowns, typical Whedon game, but two critical interceptions. Yeah, and just to put it in perspective, they have 10 turnovers on the year coming into tonight's game. Three turnovers in the first half alone has a lot to do with why we're sitting at a 27 to 24 game here to start this second half. So Whedon, one-time baseball player and drafted by the New York Yankees, we were asking him, is his wife a big football fan? She said, tell you the truth, she's a real baseball fan. She loved that sixth game of the World Series that they watched together and didn't everybody as Randall gets the first call here and Lamar in there to make the stop. As you take a, a look back at his days as a pitcher for the New York Yankees, he was a second-round draft choice. And then he had an arm injury, and so that forced him out of baseball. He'd already been offered a scholarship here in football, and he decided to take him up on it. And here he is, firing complete. And Tracy Moore working the middle makes another grab. He's been his most active receiver here tonight. He's got a seven, make it eight balls now for 139 yards. You know, Justin Blackman gets a lot of attention. Moore is a guy that he's going to tonight. And so far, we've not seen Josh Cooper. He's not played at all tonight. Oh, there's that flash in the round with Josh Stewart, the freshman, and he is out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Malone makes a stop. This play has to be timed perfectly, and it was. Josh Stewart, who is a true freshman out of Denton, Texas, has the speed to be able to execute that. Now the power run first down for Randall and Randall is down to the 31 yard line and Garrett making the stop it once we start naming the defensive backs for me to make those tackles that means they're getting to the second level all of a sudden yeah you love to see the way they attack out on the perimeter with the, the dash as you said kind of a jet sweep they get back into the middle and then they'll start to attack throwing the football vertically as well play action fake Whedon fires and going to be thrown out of bounds at around the 15-yard line is that freshman you talked to about, Stewart. Yeah, and watch the accuracy. He's in rhythm here. He steps and makes a perfect throw to the freshman, Stewart, who's been involved here for two of the last three plays. He's got great speed and gaining more experience. Again, Hubert Anium is out. He's not able to play. And again, Josh Cooper not playing tonight. Others have had to step up, and they're willing to do it and able to do it. There's that slip screen to Randall. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. That's the third touchdown pass of the night for Brandon Wheaton. Boy, they did such a good job for the first series here to start the second half of mixing up the play calling. Todd Monken went back to the drawing board there at halftime. And they mixed it up. They gave a lot of different looks with their formations. They attacked out wide. They attacked up the middle. Play action. About everything you can do. And they marched right down the field. Six plays and 62 yards for the touchdown. So Oklahoma State regains a 10-point lead. You see, he flips it out. There's Blackman blocking. The NFL would love to see that. And it's touchdown Cowboys. Well, here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, we continue Dr. Pepper's route to the championship and the number three team of the nation regains a 10-point lead after giving up 24 unanswered points, and now it's the Wildcats' turn to see if they can bounce back in this game. Lockett has been coming out of his own end zone here. I don't think he's going to get a shot at that one. This touchdown by Oklahoma State, Garrett, the, the corner blitzes and leaves two guys out there for two to block. Randall goes in motion. Wheaton gets it out to him quickly. And there's Charlie Moore with a nice block. And also Justin Blackman, who's the All-American, the go-to receiver. He's showing he's going to get downfield, get in position there. Gets away with maybe a little bit of hold there with a the left hand, but opens it up there for the touchdown there. And Randall is so tough out of the backfield catching the ball, but well-designed play and perfect execution on the entire drive by Oklahoma State. The 
complete. And out of bounds at the 26 yard line is Thompson. First and 10, passing the football. Klein has had most of his success tonight throwing the ball on first and 10. We've talked all night about Oklahoma State is forcing the Kansas State offense to throw to be able to move the ball. They've had a double reverse and some passes that have opened up some things in their running game. Hubert's the running back on this second and three. Klein rolls, throws for the first down, and Lockett is out of bounds here on the near sideline at the 34-yard line. You know, Tyler Lockett. Brown, I'm sorry. I, no, no. I, I was going to say that most of Klein's passes uh, are, are, you know, the short to intermediate range. So far tonight, he's 15 to 22 for 140 yards, but he's been effective, and he's done enough to make uh, make the Cowboys have to respect that. Play action, moves the pocket to the left, and throws it away down that left sideline. Because what's happening is, is the defense is collapsing towards the line of scrimmage, and eventually, there was a little mix up there between Harper and Klein, but eventually, you gotta take your shots. And, and whether that's the, a reverse, or whether it's a, a double move, something periodically, you've gotta try to get the ball thrown vertically, because the safeties and the corners, everybody, they are attacking the line of scrimmage for the shorter passes and for the running game. Second down and 10 for Klein and the Wildcats. Quick throw, and they got a first down, and there is Andre McDonald. You know what Coach Young said about this big fella, 6'8", he's just a Big Mac shy of about 350. Take a look at him. <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss it. 6'8", 275, and, and he has a crease somehow at his size. He got wide of the linebackers and in between the safeties, and again, Klein in rhythm there. And again, his footwork isn't always perfect, but that time he found his man and made the throw. So here's the Wildcat now for the fourth time. They scored a touchdown off of it. Angelo Pease looks for the left, comes behind Paulson, still struggling and uh, crosses midfield. That was a little sloppy. A little bit too slow developing. They've had some success tonight with that Wildcat formation. That one just that one just took a little bit too long. And Oklahoma State's fast enough on defense where they can get in position there and chase that down. If you're gonna go with that, and it's not he's not much of a threat throwing the football, you've got to find a crease and get upfield in a hurry. Second down and eight, and Hubert alongside Klein. There's Lockett, came back and took the handoff. And Lockett for the first down, breaks free, 35-30. And he is down to the 26-yard line. Martin making the stop. Watch the motion by the quarterback, a little pump fake, just trying to get the defense out of position, trying to get them to be eager, which they've been all night. And I'm telling you, the misdirection and the play action passes have opened things up. And then how about the creativity and the quickness by Tyler Lockett, the freshman in, in, the, in, open, in the open field? A 23-yard gain. He's carried three times for 84 yards. He had a 60-yard run on a reverse back in the first half. A good drive going here for the Wildcats. Klein keeping it all the way on a quarterback run. As we check him for an update, here's Robert Flores in the studio. All right, Brent, AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. How about Monty Ball topping 200 yards, rushing and scoring three times for Wisconsin. Their blowout win over Purdue, 62-17. 24 touchdowns this season, most in the country. You can text vote to 55862. Brent, by the way, Alabama leading LSU 6-3. So that field goal battle continues there, Robert, and here it's 34-24, 10 point lead, but Wildcats are on the move here again. Yeah, late, a late uh, hit there on Colin Klein, 15 yards down now to the 10 yard line after the run. So they will take it first and goal from the 10.
There's movement. And now it's first and 15. That is costly when you get down there. And big Clyde off there. Offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty, first down. And while we were away, the previous play where Klein picked up some pretty good yards towards the end of the play there, Ryan Robinson just gets on top of him and gets a hold of that face mask. And that's what the officials ended up calling. There's a little bit of jaw in there towards the end of that play, too. And now the penalty moves the Wildcats back to the 15-yard line. Keeping it all the way. Picked up a yard, Blatnick making the stop. Just to show you how important penalties are in that area, Kansas State is third in the nation in goal-to-go situations. 95% of the time, they're at go uh, goal, uh, first and goal-to-go. They have scored 19 of 20 times and scored touchdowns. And a lot of it's been because of Colin Klein running the option. You get a false start. <laughs> That's a whole different thing and a whole different challenge for this offense. Wilson alongside as a protector. He's number 37. He's the blocking fullback there. Getting on the same page with the quarterback. Now gets over to the left and they have to burn a timeout. They were down to one second on the play clock. Klein saw it. They burn a timeout. Guess who's not happy about that? We'll be right back. Wildcats threatening. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Prudential. Every challenge is an opportunity. Prudential, bring your challenges. And Lexus, it's time to engineer amazing. In a game that has been dominated by turnovers, Oklahoma State has turned it over three times, resulting in 17 points. K-State twice for 14. The Wildcats are threatening here again with 5.55 remaining in the third quarter. They are down at the Cowboys' 14-yard line. Klein back in the gun alone. Checks the sideline. Five receivers are out on this second and goal. Drops it off, lock it, touchdown as he dives across. The freshman from Tulsa. Brent, this is a huge play and an opportunistic move here by Lockett. We'll see if he's going to be okay. But Markel Martin, the safety was manned up with him, and he fell down in man-to-man -man coverage. Klein finds him, and it's a touchdown. And now on is Anthony Contelli for the extra point. And Kansas State bounces back again. They trail it by three. It'll be the Cowboys' turn when you come back. Well, a reminder that ABC Tuesday, the new night for laughs. Tuesday's number one new comedy, Last Man Standing. Tim Allen is a man among women. A lot of women raises three daughters. Good luck with that. Last Man Standing, all new Tuesday at 8, 7 central on ABC. And here, Oklahoma State still ahead, but only by three with 5.48 to go in the third quarter. They kick it short to keep it away from the dangerous return man. And Herschel Sims, the freshman, is down at the 35. Well, Brent, this is the matchup that you want on the outside. You have a receiver moving like this. Watch number 10. He's a safety trying to stay with the receiver. He slips down trying to stay with the quicker receiver. One-on-one -on -one coverage, man-to-man. -man. Good job of Klein finding it. And look behind Klein. Blacknick comes so close to getting the pressure knocking that ball away and preventing the touchdown. So they hold up just long enough to give Klein the time, and he finds the one-on-one -on -one matchup to the, for the touchdown. Blackman with eight catches for 78 yards as Oklahoma State opens with a random run to the 40-yard line on first down. Hartman making the stop for the Wildcats. It's like we have Tyson Hartman, the safety who had a big interception earlier in the game, has gone down. He's been really a big part of this team, four-year starter. So he will come to the sideline for at least a play. 
The other pick tonight was Alan Chapman. And Coach Snyder is coming out to see his injured safety. You know, you think about Bill Snyder and you think about all the fellows who have worked under him and how they have moved on to great success around the country. And the Snyder coaching tree just continued from where the Hayden Fry coaching tree left off. Bill, of course, was a longtime offensive coordinator at Iowa. Now we have Bob Stoops down at Oklahoma. He was an assistant with Bill. Brett Bielma up at Wisconsin. Jim Levitt was down South Florida. Mark Mangino, the last successful coach at Kansas. And Mike Stoops, until recently, of course, was the Arizona head coach. And all of these fellas learned the art of hard work, good recruiting, sticking with it, details from that man right there, Bill Snyder. Pearson has checked into the game, the backup safety right now. He better hold on to his hat facing Justin Blackman and Brandon Whedon. So Whedon underneath was all alone and they've got an easy first down with Colton Chelf. And that's his first catch of the night. He's the brother of the backup quarterback here, Clint Chelf. Well, they're really trying to mix it up and, and get as many different receivers involved in this attack as they can. It is definitely not just Justin Blackman and Tracy Moore. K-State rushes four. And speaking to Mr. Blackman early on cue, <laughs> there he is for the first down to the 37-yard line. Well, they, they do a good job of mixing it up. And you always over the years used to hear Mike Leach say, when it comes to balance, I'm not necessarily concerned about balance when it comes to run in the pass. Balance to me is spreading the ball out to the receivers and the backs in a passing game. And he's doing that. First down and 10. Wheaton. I'll tell you what, another crack was taken by Malone that time. He jumped the big fella. This is an impressive defensive back play by Kansas State tonight. And, and that time, Whedon's very deliberate. There are times when he anticipates well. There are other times where he seems to be more deliberate in telegraphing his throws, and it gives Malone a chance to be able to break on the football. That time, he almost came up with another interception out in the flat. Might want to use a pump fake. He's sitting These on it. These corners right. have been jumping routes. So Whedon throws short underneath to the 31 yard line and that's Michael Harrison and he will limp off having been shaken up on that play. An area that they just don't have a lot of depth. They're rotating as many bodies as they can. They're lucky that they do have eight or nine different receivers because three of them right now are not in the lineup. Third down and four. Randall explodes for the first down. Close to the 25 yard line. Lemur makes the stop. This is part, the part of this offense I really love. It's one thing to stretch a defense horizontally and vertically with the passing game, but when you make the linebackers and the safeties have to be respectful of the running game and how physical they run the ball with this offensive line and Joseph Randall, that really makes them be aware and locks them into that box area and it opens up the passing lanes on the outside. 26 yard line, they'll hand to Randall. Tries to sweep right, crosses the 20 into the red zone. And Arthur Brown, the outstanding linebacker for the Wildcats, makes the stop. And Whedon and the Cowboys are threatening here with three and a half minutes to go in the third. You know, they typically like to run the football. They average 182 yards a game on the ground. So far tonight, only 40 yards. So they've tried to attack Kansas State more through the air with Whedon's arm. Hartman checks back into the lineup. He is back. Whedon crosses in underneath the Blackman. Blackman 10, five reaches. Fumble! K-State's got it in the end zone. That'll come out on the 20-yard line. Blackman's second turnover of the night. Uncharacteristic to see Blackman and this offense turn the ball over. That's four turnovers on the night. And Brent, he's fighting for extra yards. He's trying to get the ball in the end zone. But this is something you can't do. He's in fighting. He stretches the ball and gets the ball away from his body. Watch the ball extend. Look how far it is away from his body. And there's the defense able to knock it away. It was the linebacker, Lemur. Yeah, the ball gets away, so he has it in a good position there. And then he's he just fighting for extra yards, but it's really far away from where it can be protected. 
And in position for Lemur, who looked like he knocked that ball away before his knee touched. So Lemur gets a hand on it. And Kansas State with Garrett. Watch number 27 come free here now. Comes right into his arms, and he wraps it up. And a call on the field is fumble recovered by Kansas State. Ball comes out After to the 20 yard review, line. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Fumble and a recovery by the defense. First down. Kansas State came into this game after losing the way they did to Oklahoma where they gave up 35 points in the second half. And they, it was a drubbing. They came into this game knowing that they had to beat this team. Oklahoma State, who is number one in the nation in turnover margin coming into tonight. They had to beat him in turnover margin to get the ball away from Mike Gundy and the Cowboys. And up to this point, they're winning in that area, and that's why they're competitive on the field. So Klein takes the first snap, and it's a quarterback keeper. And he's got a first down. Crosses the 30-yard line. There's an injured... Offensive player gets back up now for K-State. So he's not going to need any medical attention. One of the offensive linemen was down momentarily. And Klein looks back over to that sideline now. Three minutes to go. Down by only three. If Oklahoma State's turned it over four times, Hurdy. And if you're a Kansas State fan, that's what you want to see. You get a turnover, you get the ball back. First play, you want positive yards. There they get a first down. Hubert is the running back. Play action, fires, sideline, Lockett works it. And Lockett with a first down and another big play. And what a future Tyler Lockett, the freshman from Tulsa, has. His daddy had the all-time reception record at K-State. Watch his feet. Watch his feet. See if he gets is that left foot still down as he tries to catch the football. We'll turn this one over. Yeah, is that right? There's no question. Right. Right. Well, not uh, the, so the sure. toe, the left toe yeah. may have touched. Uh, it's gonna Definitely got to take a look I at it. Spoke to earlier. Play Definitely got to take review. a look at it. But getting back to your point, he has a huge future, and you see that name Lockett at Kansas State. You know, great things are going to happen. Bill Snyder has a good look at it. Does his left toe touch? Wow. It's a matter of that. Now, a, remember, the call on the field is complete. Okay, there's still daylight. Do they hit simultaneously? Ty you, goes to the runner. Yeah, you can't turn that over if it's <laughs> you're exactly right. I think, and, uh, meanwhile, I think as this was field. going on with the fumble in the end zone, Alabama threw a costly interception, and LSU is threatening in that showdown in the SEC. Again, if you just join Alabama, leads it by a field goal. It's been a battle of field goals. 6-3 in that game. Here, 34-31, Oklahoma State with a three-point lead and instant replay going back and forth now to see if Lockett's reception is going to hold. Call on the field is complete. Tell you what, this is, this is pivotal. This is a huge call. Huge. And it's going to be marked at the 47 if they give it to Lockett. Again, it's just a matter of that left toe. Mm, I, I think the left toe got down. And if, and, and if we're sitting here thinking that it looks like the left toe got down, like we said, that gray area, typically they will rely on the, on the officials on the field. I don't know. If, it just doesn't seem to be enough evidence to overturn this call. Now obviously, they're looking at it. They saw the same thing that you did at home. Make the decision here. And we'll go on with our business. If this ends up being a catch, it's two plays, and they're already across midfield after the turnover. After further review, the receiver's foot was out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass. Wow. Second down and 10 at the 32 yard line. So maybe they didn't like that left toe tap. It was close. <laughs> it was close. So here we go. Second down and 10 now as it comes back to the 32 yard line. And again, Oklahoma State was going in to score when Blackman fumbled into the end zone. And the Wildcats down the field goal, have the ball, 
on the 32-yard line. Off a of play action, Klein now throws this one away. Live to fight another day with third and ten. Blatnick was coming after him, and there is a flag on this play, however. I think there's a holding call here on Kansas State. A lot of times when a quarterback starts scrambling for his life, those linemen are doing everything they can holding to hold up. Offense, number 80. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Using the tight ends, Brandon, pass protection. Travis Tannehill hoping, helping out Clyde Offner on the right side of the offense. Five wide receivers on this second and 20 for the Wildcats. Klein taking off. Middle opens up for him. 35. And he will be tackled by Sean Lewis. Well, they, and watch how he sets the blocks up. Spread the field out with a bunch of receivers. It's almost like a design quarterback draw on second down and long. He gets them to a third and manageable, but he has such great instincts as a runner, Brent. He, 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 you know, he, I know he's a quarterback, played some receiver early in his career, but when he has the ball in his hands, their best play a lot of times when the receivers are covered and he gets to run with the football. Third and six. Final minute and a half of the third quarter, winding down. Here's Klein, forced to take off, cannot get the first down. And he was stopped by Caleb Levy, sophomore linebacker from Texas, number 45, and the punt team comes onto the field, and Justin Blackman continues to return punts here for Oklahoma State. Remember, he had a bad penalty in a Texas A&M game, and he came over to the sideline, and he told Coach, don't worry about it, I'll get it back for us. And he did. Now let's see what he does this time after the turnover. High fair catch signal by Blackman. And he makes it at the 23. Well, the BCS countdown is going to be very, very interesting tomorrow. You're going to have a loser in the LSU-Alabama game. Stanford's already a winner. Oklahoma State's trying to move up. Boise State's hanging there. 8.15 Eastern. Herbie and the gang will unfold all the details for you tomorrow night. And that's going to be a heavily watched selection show at 8.15 to see who drops into what slot. Here comes Randall, be the running back behind Wheaton. Play action, stands tall, comes middle, Blackman, and here he comes. Not fumbling this one, first down at the 42-yard line. This is the one thing that the coaches love about Blackman. Watch Ty yeah. Zimmerman, Brent, 12. He stays up tight in coverage, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's the matchup that you've been locked in on all night. This time, Blackman gets the best of Malone in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it's a good throw by Wheaton. Indeed it was, and it'll be for Wheaton. He's thrown for 387 yards. And except for the turnovers, this would be a blowout as Anderson catches that. Which is ironic because that's what Oklahoma State typically does to their opponent. But tonight they've had to try to overcome that. We'll see if they're able to execute here once they get into Kansas State territory and put points up on the board. Try to give a little, get a little cushion here against the Wildcats. The ball is at the 38-yard line for Wheaton. They run the draw with Randall. Got the first down. And Moore as he goes to the 28-yard line, bringing the clock down on the third quarter. Oklahoma State, number three, leading, but only by three points. We'll be right back. We are back for the fourth quarter as the Dr. Pepper road to the championships continues here with the number three team in the nation clinging to a three point lead. The numbers one and two tied at six. As they go into the fourth quarter over in Tuscaloosa. 
The Big 12 of, as a conference, according to the computers, is number one. And the SEC closely behind them. And of course, the SEC features Alabama and LSU, the two most highly rated teams in the country. So we'll see what they've got here on first and ten. Ball across the 30-yard line for Brandon Wheaton and the Cowboys. Quick pitch. And Ty Moore. Tracy Moore, the receiver, number 87. He's been active here tonight. Well, he has had a, a career night. Nine receptions, 146 yards. Is that inside receiver? He's got good size, 6'1, 233 pounds. And they get the ball to him in a hurry. He's able to fight off Arthur Brown there and get some big yards. Second down and three. Wheaton fires. Dropped at the six yard line. Moore couldn't hang on that time. What's happening with a lot of these underneath routes is the linebackers are occupied. They see these receivers, there's so many of them crossing in front of them on these scissors routes that the linebackers are stepping up. And we've seen it all night. Whedon's had some success throwing right behind the two linebackers into the middle of the defense. You fired a Randall. And he is down at the 23 yard line and great defensive recognition by David Garrett. That is a big time play by David Garrett. He is tell you what if you like undersized guys that play with everything he fights off a block here and makes a play against a physical ball carrier and Joseph Randall big time play by Garrett the senior. So it is fourth down for Quinn Sharp. Made his two field goal attempts for the 19 and the 29, and now this is longest of the night. Here comes a 40-yarder, trying to make it three of three. Curls it right in beautifully. It's now a six-point lead. Well, we welcome you back to Stillwater as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary here, Herbie. Well, it's been an interesting game that's gone back and forth. Oklahoma State jumped out, but they started to make some mistakes, and it gave Kansas State some life. They put 24 points up at the half, and now they're still within six. It's kind of a game that, if you're a Kansas State fan, this is about what you were hoping for to just kind of scratch and claw, look up in the fourth quarter, and find that you're within a touchdown. So sharp. Will kick it away, and they try to keep it out of Lockett's hands here. And so Thompson, the short man, is down at the 30-yard line. Well, country music's biggest night, amazing performances by all your favorite stars. Brad Paisley and Kerry Underwood will host the CMA Awards live Wednesday, Nashville, right, Herbie? November 9th at 8, 7 Central on ABC, and I'm sure you'll be there. I will be there, more than likely, if I'm not asleep. It's late. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny Chesney, your guy will be performing there. Is he going to perform? He sure is. Looking forward to that. Here comes Huber now. He'll be the running back, first down and 10. We need time down, patient on that play clock. Klein steps away and takes off to the 34 yard line. Elkins making the stop and he takes another hit you know it's it, it's a it's a good read he's able to cut back again the instincts there as a ball carrier you can see he's wincing this guy's been wincing for five weeks takes a hit right there I'm surprised they didn't call that on Broderick Brown second down and six for the Wildcats who trail it by six. Couldn't find his man open, takes off, and he is stopped short of the first down. Broderick Brown makes the play defensively on the quarterback. 
I think that time Colin Klein may have made up his mind what to do with the football. He has this cushion, he thinks. But watch as he continues with his cadence and the call. And watch what Oklahoma State does when the ball is snapped. The ball is snapped, they jump out of that, and now that man is covered because the linebacker's safety dropped back there, made him come off of that inside receiver and have to run for it. Fumble, but he got it back. I don't think that was a real clean exchange, but he stayed right with it, trying to sneak for the first down. At least it looked a little odd, but uh, Klein had it all the way and was battling to try and get that first down. And he got it. Good <laughs> second effort. Everything he does is a little bit unorthodox, but is there any other quarterback in the country that you would want on a quarterback sneak than this kid right here? I agree with you. This kid is, he gives you everything. And it's going to take a heroic effort by Colin Klein if these Wildcats are going to get a chance to get back, uh, take the lead and get on the board again. So first down and 10. And they'll run Klein behind power this time. Now he's got about nine yards as we go to Robert Flores for an update. Robert? Brent, I'd like a little more offense in my game of the century. Defenses are obviously very good at LSU and Alabama. Marquise Mays is the tied go Wildcat intercepted by Eric Reed. LSU, Alabama tied at six, nine minutes and change in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Robert, uh, Eric Reed with a great effort of going to the ground. He was beaten by that receiver, and he wrestled it away from him as they went down. That was a terrific effort. But LSU is forced to punt it back to him. Second down and two now inside of 11 minutes here. And Hubert breaks free. He's got the first down to the 42-yard line, and Nelkins makes the stop. And this time, Colin Klein reads this off to the left of the defense. The defense is so consumed with him that... Nicholas actually locks him up on his own read and Klein showing that he's still mentally sharp late in this game perfect read and there's the aggressiveness by John Hubert getting upfield in a hurry shaking some tackles for that first down remember now they're only down six points ten and a half minutes to go here in regulation Klein and the Wildcats driving play action and down he goes at the 45. Christian Littlehead from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, makes the play. Just about to say how well the offensive line has been working here as Kansas State's mixed up their play calling with the run in the pass these last few drives. But this time, Oklahoma State was able to get through. It was the play action off the option look, and they were able to fight through that time. And it was good coverage downfield that also gave them more time to get in there. Second down and 13. Klein checks the sideline. Shovel pass inside and a beautifully read and designed play for a first down to the 30-yard line. Hubert and the rush was all on the inside and they break for 15. Boy, some great blocks by the right side of that offensive line. Offner does a nice job. Good acceleration. He draws the defensive end towards him and Robinson and then deals it underneath. Perfect execution here by this offense and of course by the quarterback that time, Colin Klein. Klein checks that sideline. Ball at the Cowboys 30 yard line. Follows the two lead blockers. Klein crashes to the 27 yard line. Rodgers making the stop. And the number three team could be in deep trouble here if the Wildcats can finish. It's about executing in the red zone. If they get down in that area, they cannot settle for a field goal. And anytime Oklahoma State plays, they always have a disadvantage in the time of possession. But this is big time advantage tonight. Nearly 16 minutes for Oklahoma for Kansas State. Blood on the left hand. The quarterback not going any place. This youngsters are gamer. And it was whistled dead just before the snap. False start. Oh, a okay. tough penalty. This, kid, this kid's got blood. Yard penalty. On his, both his elbows, on his left hand. I mean, this guy, this essentially is a linebacker 
playing quarterback. He's not a running back playing quarterback. He is a linebacker. How can you not love what Colin Klein brings to the table? Remember, this team went down into Miami and beat the Hurricanes. That's when everybody started to pay attention to them earlier this year. Second down and 12. Klein checks that sideline again. Lockett's open. Got him. Lockett battling toward that first down marker. And appeared to be shy. Elkins making the stop. Lockett sat down and was all alone there. Yeah, Brennan. And, and you know, we get so caught up in the toughness of Klein. Here he shows patience. The linebackers clear out. He just checks it down to Lockett, who's in the open space. You and I can see it from up here. It's another thing to see it back there in that pocket, but it was good patience that time and good awareness by Klein to find him underneath. Now they come with two tight on third and short, and you know how dangerous Klein is when he runs it. You've got to hurry now on that play clock. Pitch the option, and Hubert's cut off for a loss, and it's a terrific play by Alex Elkins. Elkins stayed right there on the pitch man, and it was not to be, and here comes a huge fourth down. Brent, I think what he saw, and the reason there was so much communication, is look at all the defenders down in this area. There's some space out here. His big tight end this time, McDonald and Ofter, get off the line of scrimmage freely, but they're not able to account for Elkins. They saw everybody pinching down, anticipating a quarterback sneak, which they did earlier in the game. Nobody was to the outside, and instead of going for the easy first down, they looked for the big play. A stunner out west. UCLA has beaten Arizona State. Hang on, everybody. What a night. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. And in part by Euloric. For more information, visit Euloric.com. With 7-11 left in Stillwater, Kansas State down by six on a fourth and seven. They need to reach the 19 for the first down. Klein. Dances away. He's got daylight first down to the 13 yard line. When it opened up to the left, Klein took out, and you know how good a runner this youngster is. Well, look at the corners, Brent, on the outside, man to man. Everybody's locked up on the outside like this. The only man that's left in the middle is actually the outside linebacker, Sean Lewis, but he, some, for some reason, gets depth. They leave a huge running lane that time for one of the most aggressive and athletic quarterbacks in the Big 12, and Colin Klein picks up the first down. So it is first and 10 for the underdog Wildcats. Klein keeps it again. And he is battered as he crosses the 10-yard line. Klein tonight has thrown for 195 yards, and now he's closing in on rushing for 100. Red zone success tonight. Four times they've been inside the 24 scores, including the three touchdowns. And they've had a lot of success this entire year once they get inside the 10-yard line and getting touchdowns and not settling for field goals. Strength is to the right. Hubert is there behind Wilson. Second down and seven. Klein going to keep it himself. Cuts and short of that first down marker with Lowe making the stop. Now you see that formation, you know that they're going to run this football to the right. Look at the patience. He waits for it. He picks up a nice little block there. Again, John Hubert doesn't get enough credit within this offense. It's one thing to carry the ball. It's another thing to be 5'7 and 185 pounds to be a lead blocker for your bloody armed quarterback, Colin Klein. So it is third down and one for Klein. Option, Klein, in zone. An extra point away from leading number three. Stanford, Boise State on full alert right now. 
the previous third down on the option instead of going for the sneak they ran an option and he pitched it instead of keeping it this time the same look exactly from Sean Lewis and instead of, of pitching it out where Lewis could make a play on it he cuts underneath it the blocks are there and that is a big time drive 14 plays 70 yards and almost eight and a half minutes and here's Cantelli for the lead and Kansas State regains the lead over a three touchdown favorite at home. What a night in college football. And now for tonight's big picture brought to you by Sony and what a day it has been Iowa upsetting Michigan at home in the Big Ten. And speaking of upsets, Northwestern, a 17-point underdog, goes to Lincoln. And the Razorbacks keep pace in that West. And remember, down the road, they've got a big one with LSU looming in Baton Rouge. And of course, if you didn't hear it, UCLA, as time was running out, kicked a field goal, I believe, to beat Arizona State and take command of the Pac-12 South. And again, another short kickoff. And Oklahoma State will have it at 35. Herbie, let's take a look now at this week's BCF standings brought to you by Allstate. Well, of course, LSU and Alabama up at one and two, still six to six. With, they're in the fourth quarter there. Oklahoma State down one here. I mean, this is getting interesting in the top three. And then you have Stanford, the one big. Boise State just getting started at UNLV. And, you know, Oklahoma wins today, but they lose Ryan Broyles. And now it's Oklahoma State, and it's Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman in this offense. See how they answer that touchdown drive by Kansas State. Empty the backfield. Whedon fires in underneath, complete to Randall, a running back. And he picks up a first down. So Randall with a 10-yard gain. And that ball is going to be spotted at the 46-yard line. Very impressed with how Brandon Whedon has bounced back from some adversity and turnovers that he has had. He still had a pretty solid night on, in this game. Wide open, there's Blackman. Blackman Dessy for the end zone. Gave one up and got one back. That is Justin Blackman, just what the coaches told us, a 54-yard touchdown pass and the best, as Herbie said, the best pass-catch combo in all of college football. And just like that, Wheaton and the Cowboys lead it. And Wheaton is looking over the coaches about going for two and where they want to put the ball. Instead of going up by six, they want to go up by seven in case Kansas State moves the ball down. They're trying to move it over to the left hash, but... How about the throw by Whedon? It's man-to-man -man coverage. It's been a battle all night between Blackman and the Kansas State defensive backs. That time he got separation. Whedon found him in one-on-one -on -one coverage and made the throw. 460 yards passing for Whedon here tonight. And here they go for two. He's going to try to throw for it again. Got him all alone. Same man. Hands it to the referee. How are you going to stop the big fella? <laughs> Got to feed the big dog, I mean. <laughs> I'll tell you what, folks. This K-State team is not done. Come on back. <laughs> it's been this kind of night. Brandon Whedon, 460 yards. That's a career high and a school record here at Oklahoma State. In front of 58,895, a new stadium record. And at the recently remodeled Boone Pickens Stadium, and a beautiful job they did. Money well spent by Mr. Pickens. And now the kickoff coming K-State's way here. Lock it. Driven back to the goal line. 15 20. Looking for a seam on that left side. And he's at the 40. Breaks free. Lockett running for the end zone. Tripped up down at the 20. That's oh my. 
You talk about a football game that broke out. Charlie Moore <laughs> saved six. Oh, Charlie Moore, what an effort. What, what a wall that set up and a return to the left by the return team. Great job of finding the crease, and that is just flat-out speed and finding a seam. You work on it all week. You set it up. You think you know where a weakness is on the return team, and they got exactly what they need, and what an effort there. A shoestring stop there by Moore to stop Lockett. Let's go back to the touchdown, and, and what I think is interesting is the, the night that Tracy Moore has been able to have right here, he's got nine catches and 146 yards. He's going to go to the flag. By doing that, the safety is occupied, and it frees up Justin Blackman in one-on-one -on -one coverage right here with the corner who's done a good job, Nigel Malone, but he's one-on-one. -on -one. I cannot believe there's not a safety, that Zimmerman's not helping out. They leave Blackman alone one-on-one -on -one against Malone, and he makes him pay for it. They decide to go for two. They put the ball on the left hash because they want to work to the right, and look who they find again. Justin Blackman one-on-one -on -one and confusion in Kansas State secondary on the two-point play. So Amati shaken up on the play. Dion Amati, one of the safeties here, limping off the field, and he needs a little bit of assistance. And here is the Whedon Blackman combination tonight. 12 catches, 196 yards, averaging 16 yards a catch, two touchdowns. Also fumbled into the end zone once, remember, and Whedon has thrown a couple of interceptions along with his record setting night. So here we go now. Colin Klein and the Wildcats. They are down seven. After the two point conversion, Klein keeps it, dances free, and he is brought down at the 15 yard line, picking up five on first down, low with the stop. What a great job of instinctively feeling the linebacker Levy gets through there. He's able to shake him off, and that's where the lower body, the strength in his legs is able to come into play. Colin Klein is a load to bring down. 6'5", about 225 pounds. He's not going to beat you with quickness. He's going to beat you with speed and power. Four minutes remaining. Alabama and LSU go to overtime. They are tied in a field goal duel here. A much more wide open game and K-State trailing it by seven. Trying to get this one into overtime with 345. You wonder how much Colin, how much gas Colin Klein has Colin Klein has left. He now has 25 carries on the night, 28 pass attempts. He has been the offense running and throwing. He's got to do it all. See what he comes up with here on third down. So dangerous as a runner. They got two downs to make this. He'll keep it on third. He's got the first breaks free end zone touchdown. They're an extra point away from a tie. Boy, out just great vision and a great feel. He just has a, a, a firm grasp of what Bill Snyder wants. As much as Brandon Whedon understands, Mike Gundy and Todd Monken, it's the same thing with Colin Klein. It's a different style offense, but he has such great patience when he comes to running that option and that isolation play for the quarterback when he's able to cut back. The kickoff return by Lockett. And now we are deadlocked at 45 on Contelli's extra point. But let's go back to Lockett. He set it up. Then the three plays after that, Klein kept it for 20 yards. This, the last one. <laughs> Somebody get him some oxygen. Look at the vision here, Brent. Cuts it back to the left. He is 6'5", 225 pounds, and he's that elusive. A little jump cut here by the big fella. And again, these linebackers, you try to take a good angle. You try to be aggressive. The problem is he's elusive at 6'5", and he's able to cut back against you if you overcommit. A 90-point night here in Stillwater. <laughs> there are the numbers passing, but look at what he added rushing. Four total touchdowns and only that one interception. And as far as the Gamer of the Week award, oh, I'll tell you, forget about it. This youngster has been a delight to watch here tonight with a team that came in about a three touchdown underdog against the number three team in the nation. And you know, the one thing that Coach Gundy was a little bit concerned about is stay focused, stay focused. We're not yet number two. You've got to take care of business in the Big 12. You've got to beat Kansas State first. 
That's step number one. Well, we shall see if they can do that as Gilbert, Gilbert now breaks to a seam. And he's out to the 35-yard line at 311. And can the defense stop Blackman? We shall find out. Bears and the Eagles. Monday night countdown at 7. And then it'll be the Big Bad Bears and the Eagles. Are they back? 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. We shall find out. That's your Monday nighter. Right now, with the game on the line, and how big was that two-point conversion? that Oklahoma State went for now 311 and let's see if Wheaton can strike again back middle got it complete throws it now to Anderson Isaiah Anderson the speed merchant out of Wichita Falls Texas and suddenly the Cowboys are threatening again after the 34 yard game interesting that time remember Blackman just had a big play that time the safety took Blackman out they had double coverage and Whedon went to the other side for a huge play Whedon back again here's Blackman got it one on one shoves the DB aside why he's so strong puts out one of those mitts and says nice to meet you Mr. Malone talk about the importance of that upper body strength for a wide receiver and why guys need to be hitting the weights Justin Blackman's a guy that doesn't waste much time in a weight room and it pays off for him on the field just like that Whedon's threatening again incomplete good coverage that time by the Wildcats remember they did not pick up that first down so it'll be third and one and this is almost has a feel who's gonna be the last man standing here you I know? said last night while you were in Tuscaloosa to our guys yeah. George Hill and Scott here I said it's gonna be kind of nice to take a deep breath and just have a kind of an easy going game <laughs> holy Toledo look what we've every got every week we get these games. 222 now Herbie third down and one and they got it. Randall breaks free in zone. Oklahoma State regains the lead. Joseph Randall breaks in. But there's a lot of time for the never quit kids from Manhattan. That's a 23 yard touchdown run. I'm betting they keep this kickoff away from you know who. And that, of course, is Mr. Tyler Lockett after this extra point. Here's Quinn Sharp. Seven point lead again. Randall has good quickness, but he's tough. The formation with Randall on this side. Here's Brown in the middle. Here's the other outside linebacker. Look at this huge hole right here. And that's where they're able to attack. There's, there's just, they don't have the angles to be able to come there. And then Zimmerman, the safety's in position to be able to at least stop him. He already had the first down. Zimmerman's right there to make a play. But this gives you an idea. Look how quick. Look at that little shake right there. Been talking all night about Colin Klein. How about the running of Joseph Randall in the open field? So now Kansas State will set the kickoff return and Oklahoma State will figure out how they keep Tyler Lockett from breaking free. Tyler Lockett has already returned two touchdowns this two kickoffs for touchdowns this season returned the last one he almost broke number three didn't he folks went down to the 20 yard line. I gotta tell you, I, I'm kicking this one on the ground, Herbie, or pooching it. <laughs> Number 16. If I'm Oklahoma State, I'm not giving him a whiff. He's from just down the road, folks. And that's right, down in Tulsa. They're probably saying, how come we couldn't recruit a locker? Here we go. <laughs> Alabama missed a field goal in overtime. LSU can win it with a field goal. There's that short kick. Will not be Lockett. And the return man is down. That was Thompson who went down about the 29-yard line. Wow. Stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up coming up right after tonight's game. You're going to want to hear the details of what went on around the country today. Absolutely amazing. And LSU has won it. No, hold on now. Hold on. They're saying he's out of bounds. They're saying he's out of bounds. I can't watch them both at the same time. <laughs> we're doing a, we're doing a heck of a job of it though, my friend. 
or 42 Ford is tightrope walking the sideline. Michael Ford. Here we go. Stays out of bounds. The LSU with a first and goal there. And here's Klein. Comes back with a screen to Hubert. And Hubert is out to the 39-yard line. Love the call on first and 10. Remember, this is a different style offense. Kansas State's down to one timeout. They don't have the ability to spread you out with four or five receivers. We got an Oklahoma State Cowboy down. It's like Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, oh, sure. that's, a big, that's a big loss now. Sean Lewis, but I, lo I love the call here on first and 10. A little screen, try to get a little momentum created, but only one timeout. So first downs in the boundary are Colin Klein's best friend on this drive. This, Herbie, this is one of their better defensive players out of Missouri Absolutely. City, Texas. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just a big time defensive player. The things that we talked about for Kansas State, the, the margin of error is very slight. They had to have things go their way when it comes to return yards. And you can see the advantage, the turnovers. Oklahoma State's had four turnovers. They came into this game number one in the nation in turnover margin. We talked about the importance of Kansas State winning their field position. It's been a slight edge for Oklahoma State. Trying to prevent Oklahoma State of the big plays. They've done a pretty good job, but here lately they've given up some plays. And in third down conversions, they're converting at 50% against Oklahoma State. That's pretty good. So it's the little things that add up and a little bit of Colin Klein magic, and they're in this game. 52 45, and here's Klein. Takes off, and he's short of the first down. Remember, the clock is going, and Colin Klein at least stepped up into the pocket to give them here a third and short, but the clock starts to work against Kansas State. Bassett and Jones make that stop. Third and one now. First down will stop the clock. K-State with only one timeout left. They got to convert this one. Klein rides the running back. First down, and the clock will momentarily stop. They'll move the chains now. Seven-point lead at 121. And he was reading Jamie Blacknick, and it took a little bit of time there at the mesh point, but he made the right read. I think the defense anticipating Klein keeping it, but he gives it to Hubert. Klein batted away on first and 10, James Thomas. The senior. Bats it away, and it'll be second and 10 at the 113 mark. Klein goes for just a quick throw. Thomas right there gets up in the air. You can see that Ofter tries to get to him, but by the time he does, he's already gone up in the air and knocked that down. He read the quarterback's eyes. He saw that he wanted to go with the quick throw, got up in the air, and timed it perfectly. Here is Klein. Back. Takes off. Running for the first down, and he will step out of bounds at the 40-yard line and stop the clock at the 105 mark. Zach Craig on the back side came on a blitz, number 23. He decides they're going to, Bill Young's going to put pressure from the back side, and they try to catch him off guard. There's the field. Nice block again by Hubert. And then look at the running lane to the outside here for Colin Klein. He picks up huge yards and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Yeah, 19 more yards rushing. Herbie's run for 137. He's got 105. He's got one timeout. He's in Oklahoma State territory. Fires short of the first down. Clock's got to run. Ball's in bounds. That's Thompson. They got to hurry now. They're inside of a minute. And with only one timeout, Bill Snyder's got to hold on to that timeout. They need a touchdown now and an extra point to get this into overtime. 44 seconds. Klein. Quick strike. Got the first down. Receiver gets down to hold on. It's incomplete. Umpire waves it off. And that was Tavis Tannehill. Couldn't quite hang on to one in the middle. Klein thought he had him. And if the most important thing for Kansas State is the clock stops. So the urgency slows down. It's not always about the downs here and this hurry up. It's about trying to manage that clock. Even though it's an incompletion, they didn't get that first down. The clock stops, and now they can set up for a play that they feel pretty good about here on third down. LSU setting up for a game winner from 25 yards. They nail it. LSU goes to Tuscaloosa and beats a Crimson Tide. Here, Klein fires, and Tannehill waved off. Tannehill had a crack at it, but he couldn't hang on. Boy, what an effort here. He, oh, boy, he looks grab. like it. 
Looks, and he just couldn't hold yeah, it. Yeah, and the ball clearly touches the ground. He tries to bring it in, but it sets up this fourth down. They have the one timeout. We'll keep an eye on the play clock here to see if there's any confusion in the huddle to force them to use this. They need the four yards. They must have the first down. They've got a half minute. They've got one timeout. Klein will try to run for it. He's got the first down. Now you hurry up. You save the timeout. There's do no you need... spike it? Or it's... do you keep going quickly? Uh, the, the spike, well, with the clock being stopped, it allows you to be able to call play, but they're going to spike it here just to get the clock stopped. 27 seconds. And he puts it right down. Coach he... Snyder all over that with 25 seconds to go now. So let's set the scene here. Those of you who just watched LSU upset Alabama in Tuscaloosa in a battle of field goals. If you come over here, the number three team in the nation, Oklahoma State, now almost a certainty to climb to number two if they can win this game. They're only up by seven, and Klein and the Wildcats are trying to get it to overtime. Stanford already a big winner over Oregon State and Corvallis. Second down and 10 for Klein. Klein is back. In trouble. Throws it away. And it will be third down. The pressure was coming from Thomas. Number 22 was all over him. James Thomas. Well, and this time, James Thomas does a good job of getting around John Hubert. He's outside here. Hubert's been picking up these blitzes all night. This time he gets around him with that great athletic ability. But how about Colin Klein? He got it outside of that pocket area and threw it downfield and avoided any kind of potential penalty of intentional grounding. But good athletic ability there by the senior Thomas to get pressure on Colin Klein. Third down and 10, final 19 seconds. Kansas State down seven. Klein, gonna fire to the corner, caught out of bounds. That was Chris Harper working the sideline to the five yard line. Clock stops with 12 to go, what a grab. He rolls to his right, he's going to the backside the whole way to the former Oregon quarterback who transferred to Kansas State a couple years ago. Harper with outstanding hands and extension to make that catch. Now. Oklahoma State. There you can see the confrontation with Bill Snyder. He's told the official when he wants a timeout. He's got one timeout to go if they can't get this in. Klein back to throw for it. Looks. Fade. End zone. Knocked away beautifully in the corner. And that was Martin. Martin went after Lockett and knocked it away. And we're down to the last five seconds of regulation. Outstanding throw. He puts it where Lockett has a shot at it. He actually gets away from Martin in one-on-one -on -one coverage. But Martin recovers with the ball floating a little bit in the air. And Bill Snyder's going to use his final timeout with five seconds to go in this game. So it has been a wild night here in Stillwater <laughs> and uh, all across the country. And uh, Herbie, of course, the, the big story is underdog LSU goes into Tuscaloosa and they stop the Crimson Tide in the battle of the two defenses. LSU wins it in overtime with a field goal. And that was the difference in that game and here. Kansas State trying to get this one to overtime. It's amazing, 52 to 45. If you just flick, uh, just turn the channel over from watching that classic between LSU and Alabama, we've got some offense here. Defensive classic. Yeah, exactly. We've got some offense in this game, and it's going to come down to the final play of the game. It's interesting. Bill Snyder, just to put this in perspective for fans that are watching tonight, Colin Klein is one of the more dynamic quarterbacks in the country. He has meant everything tonight for Kansas State, running and throwing. They're going to put the ball in his hands here and give him the option of either running this ball into the end zone or throwing it if he can find a man. But he's been very elusive and tough to deal with for the Cowboys. So it's the final five seconds. Klein checks over to the sideline to see what Coach Snyder and the staff want to come up with. And so knocked away with one second left on the clock. 
Ball is knocked away, incomplete by Broderick Brown. What? The little corner from Houston, Texas. What a play by Brown. Interesting call. What an effort. Again by Harper. Brown knocks it away. But they decide with the ball in the left hash, let's take a quick shot, throw the ball out there to Harper, hope that we still have a little bit of time for that next play. And now you'd expect to see Klein again with his chance to make a play with his feet or with his arm. Need seven. Last play of regulation coming up. Klein rolls to the right. Fires high and incomplete. And Oklahoma State will survive a scare. 52-45, one of the guttiest performances we've seen by quarterback Colin Klein and the Kansas State Wildcats, coached by Bill Snyder. Unlike a week ago at home, tonight they went out guns blazing. But in the end, the number three team survives. And they know that up next is that road trip to Lubbock, then it's Ames, Iowa, then it's back here for Bedlam against Oklahoma. Nothing's going to come easy in the battle for the BCS championship game. LSU a winner. They still have to deal with Arkansas and Baton Rouge. Stanford has to play Oregon next week. Checking down below with Lisa Salter. Thanks, Brent. Mike, how would you describe that fourth work? Well, you know, it's uh, college football's March Madness every week, you know, and uh, it's just a great effort from our team, and I got to give it, give credit to Kansas State. What a great effort from them, and both teams kept firing back. So it's just a great college football game. That final play, what did you think was coming? What was your defensive call? Well, we just wanted to get in our base, what we thought was best, and what we feel like we're good at, and we've had the most reps at. And I couldn't even see it from there. I just had to listen to the crowd. Well, I couldn't see the, once he threw the ball, I couldn't see it. I just had to listen to the crowd. Now, everyone in the building knew that Colin Klein was going to have to be the guy at coming down the stretch. What was so challenging about slowing him down? Well, he's very athletic. And, you know, you, you got to be able to stop the run. And when he's running the ball, they have an extra man. So it's difficult to stop the run. Now, are you curious about that other game? No. What was the score? Uh, nine to six, I believe. Would you like to know who won? Who won? LSU. LSU won. There you go. All now, right. <laughs> you didn't know for real. Now I'm not so sure they shouldn't have been watching our game. Absolutely. There you go. More offense. Where do you think you'll be uh, in the standings on Monday? Well, I'm guessing that uh, we'll probably move up, but ultimately, you know, it doesn't matter till the very end. All right, coach. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. All right. Thank you very much. And you could see the Kansas State bonding together walks off as one. Then meanwhile, the all mater here with a veteran quarterback, Brandon Wheaton. And they had some scare here tonight. If you weren't with us, they put up a quick 14. And then they stumbled and fumbled and turned it over four times. And they had to come from behind. Take another look here, Herbie, at the last play of the game. Well, they, they tried to motion Harper and get three receivers to the right. And honestly, Brent, they're panicking here at the end. I mean, it's there's a lot of confusion. Klein rolls to his right. Two of the receivers run the same route. I think the receivers were not on the same page. I think he was anticipating either Lockett or Thompson to go to the flag in the corner. Neither one of them did. A little bit of confusion, and Klein really had nothing to do with the football other than just try to throw it up and see if somebody might make a play. So one of the only plays we saw all night where we didn't see Kansas State execute their offense, and Colin Klein, I, I, may, I may have a new favorite player in college football. This kid left everything out of the field. It was a great effort by the Wildcats. So there you have it. Another great night of college football. Arizona State loses in the Rose Bowl to UCLA at the buzzer. LSU goes to Tuscaloosa and wins. Oklahoma State survives 52-45. Uh, we thank you so much for watching Saturday Night Football. Now we take you to the studio for the Ford wrap-up with Robert Flores. Flores, you've got some night to talk about, my friend.